What y'all, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all talking about? If you ain't talking the real, then we ain't gon' talk to ya. What y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? What y'all, what y'all, y'all talking about? If you ain't talking the real, then we ain't gon' talk to ya. Okay, so we wanted to take um we did normally we come on at six o'clock but with this topic we knew it was going to go longer than an hour we wanted no interruptions we wanted to have full conversations dialogue history knowledge drop down everything we want to bring knowledge because knowledge is power so i reached out to dr b and he has how many degrees? Go ahead. J just drop it. Drop it. I earned uh, my bachelor's, uh, master's, and PhD from UB, the largest public institution in the state of New York. Big shout out to all the downstaters, all the boroughs, Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx, and whatnot, because they all come up to Buffalo, and not for the weather. <laughs> Maybe not for the wings, but definitely for the degree. <laughs> no. we, we hope they stay up here and use their degree to serve uh, Buffalo's residents. Uh, oh, a lot yeah. of my students talk about, oh, I want to go back to the Bronx and Queens, and I love you for it. And I, love, I just had a wonderful uh, group up from Harlem visiting up at Madai. But make no mistake about it, I just met a sister who uh, lives on, off Grider, Grider. Whether it's the east side, the west side, all these areas of Buffalo, I tell young college folk, particularly my young black college students, there's a young black student in Buffalo who needs to see you. All right. And wow. The, uh, yeah. Comedian D.L. Hughley once said, in order to be a man, you got to see a man. Come on. Ooh. When you see college excellence, in order to be excellent, it's good to see excellence. Right. So, uh, yeah, basically. Okay. So this, away, away. this is what we're going to do. We... This is Black History Month, but every day should be history. 365. Exactly. And it starts at home as well. It should not be just the teachers, which only in elementary school, middle school, and high school teach about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks. There's other American history out there that is not told unless you do your research. Right. We have other African Americans that created the airplane. Yep. It wasn't the Wright brothers. We had the one that um, performed heart surgery, heart open surgery. heart surgery. Mm -hmm. We have a great movie, by the way, with yeah, Mostaf uh, and that Alan Rickman. Uh, was it Force More Powerful? No. The, uh, something the Lord hath made uh, with the blue baby and had me crying. That's a great and then he oh and goodness. he helped he helped with the blue baby. Um, what is it called? Blue blue baby syndrome, syndrome or something. Syndrome, yeah. But it was just the most deaf. And he didn't get the his... credit that he deserved. No. Yes. Well, you know, and they... Lewis Latimer proved on Edison. You uh -huh. know, all these the idea of electricity. We could roll on with the uh, the trivial pursuit of it all. Mm -hmm. We could roll on with Benjamin Banneker with traffic lights, uh, Adam C.J. Walker with the straightening car. Yes. Uh, we could do all these of that. But if I can jump in now. Go ahead, jump on in. It's most important that we do not trivialize black culture and history. Black History Month is not just February. Black History Month is every month. Amen. But human history, this is, but beyond human, let's, let's say it in terms that KRS One from the Book Down Production said, uh, black history is American history. African history is world history. And wow. before you were taken from slave, from the coast of Africa and and labeled black, black people, African people, were doing big, big things for centuries, for thousands of years. Right. So not having a contextualizing story, to just leave it in terms of trivia. You know what I mean? is injurious it does it does damage right you know what i mean because uh and i'm gonna plug it several times so let this be number one please google the phrase does african american studies matter again does mm. african american studies do right matter now. that is the title of my ted talk uh i have a unique background uh arguably the most unique background as an educator in buffalo i'm the first person in the history of buffalo for those of you who don't know why is this guy on those of you seeing me and saying, he look Puerto Rican. Uh, <laughs> That's the first thing that popped why up. Why they got an Arabic dude on that? <laughs> what is he, is really? Well, the, here's the point. Three degrees, African-American studies, 
Uh, I've been teaching African American Studies, American Studies, Anthropology, History, Global Gender Studies, American Pluralism, all at the collegiate level. Taught at uh, NCCC, taught at Brockport, uh, and I really cut my teeth at the University of Buffalo, where for decades uh, I did my thing. Uh, I'm the first person in the history of Buffalo, therefore the planet, to do three things. To win three Milton Plesser Distinguished Teaching, teaching Awards at the University of Buffalo and right. to be named the top African-American studies professor in the nation out of 8,000 by the anonymous student website RateMyProfessor.com. Okay. Some people only post on that website when they haven't done their job and they suck, Some the students. Uh, but I'm very grateful for, if you put my name there, you'll see 13, 14, maybe 15 years of anonymous student testimony. So between the TED Talk, the Milton Plesser Distinguished Teaching Award and the three Milton Plesser, I'm sorry, the TED Talk, the Milton Plesser Distinguished Teaching Award and the Rate My Professor Honor. No one's done that trifecta. Wow. So, uh, and it, it, I, I have to say it because the viewers can see me. And I understand there's a lot of downstate viewers and listeners. Oh, we got a lot. Okay. We have um, England watching. Oh, oh yeah, when well, my UK? husband and I oh, travel, well, okay. we when we travel, I didn't even know that we that's connect. All I right there, huh? Do this engineering right there. That's go. all I do. <laughs> go, <laughs> the, drop it. The thing about it is, your legitimacy and authenticity is often questioned. People question the messenger rather than the message. And the fact is, let me preface this talk tonight with. Black history, African history, is meant for the entire human family. You do not have to be black to study African American studies any exactly. more than you have to be from Mexico to eat Taco Bell. Come on. Or right. be from England to learn English. Mm -hmm. uh, however, to be effective, African American studies must study what has happened, is happening, and will be happening to those in the African diaspora. I agree. Uh, many people don't even know what the word diaspora means. That's the scattering of Africans all around the globe. And uh, I'm going to say some hard, hard s statements, throw some things down. And one of the things is uh, black people are the best people in the history of the planet at making other people rich. Yes. Whether yes. it's from Very. slavery or their consumerism, uh, the key to black empowerment is black ownership. Right. And we don't own enough of our stuff, but we sure buy My Malcolm said it better. We, we think the white man's water tastes better. Mm. And if you look around uh, the idea of how much money have black folk given to Nike, to GM, to Cadillac, mm -hmm. uh, why don't we own our own, enough our own banks? Why don't we own our own airline? Come Comedians on. make jokes about that. Man, right. Yeah, we we own our own airline, man. It'd, fly, yeah. it'd always be late and all this. Yeah. Stuff and, all, yeah. and all these things. But jokes aside, it's about ownership. It's about taking over. And, and we don't do that. Well, we do, well, but you don't see we don't well, do it that's enough. why we don't, we're we don't doing see it. that. Yeah. Owning your own media yes. and, and controlling your information, but more so, I think Nicole touched on this. Uh, there's a saying in the 60s, he won't, uh, I believe the Nation of Islam said it really, he who won't treat you right won't teach you right. Come on. So this idea that if you're uh, relying on the oppressor to give you good information and take care of you, you, you you'll know, be waiting for you got to go beyond what you're given. So going beyond is a, is a very big theme. Do your that. own research. Yes. Yeah, so I, I don't want to just rattle. So no, you no are. No. Is, but I've got specific points I want to touch on. But my pedigree, feel free to check it out. I'll be giving my contact information throughout this. But the first assignment is check out my TED Talk. Uh, does African-American studies matter? I swear that was the first. As soon as I put does African, the whole thing popped thing up. Thing comes up with him. And you see yes. me in my little zoot suit. But warning, big, big shout out to the five boroughs. I start, I can't ruin it. Just make sure you got headphones or loudspeakers on when you see it. At least the first two minutes. So, so why don't you give them the first two minutes that you do? I saw some of it. Yes, I want you to beat pop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What up, Schmark? <laughs> smart Schmark, no, he Schmark. It's always named that tune whenever I do a beat. He's like, man, that's the old Rocky. That's, that's what you told that. me. You <laughs> told me the other day. Right, I'll do like, this because Schmark Dalton, this goes out to you. And I did this on uh, on the TED Talk. No one does this. They used to bite it. Everyone was always biting my stuff. This is not a musical segment. Uh, yes, no, but, but we but, had to have him do a little Shamark, song uh, for Shamark you. Shamark told me about it already. He's like, yo, you got to have him beatbox. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> he just went on and did it. Oh, yeah.
Alright, now here's another thing about well, the more I talk, the more you'll learn about me. And I'm like that other insurance company. I know a few things because I've seen a few things. Uh huh. So, <laughs> of the arguably most successful course in the history of the SUNY system, I created the course Hip Hop and Social Issues, where students would stay three hours on a Tuesday evening and then stay an extra two hours just to kick it about material, freestyle, and beatbox. That is something you'll never hear of in college. Mm, you won't hear people all. going, man, I went to physics for three hours, then I stayed for another two. Man, I went to chemistry. Man, it was so ill, we stayed for another two hours. Man, we stayed till midnight. Yeah. Talk about equations. <laughs> Nobody does that. So uh, mm -hmm. using hip hop as a tool to study black culture and history is absolutely huge. Right. Because the way the way that the black image is consumed has been uh, dominated, obviously, by hip hop culture ever since its birth in the in the seventies. And uh, <sighs> hip hop has gotten considerably dumber since its inception. It sure has. Thank you. You and said it because I it I, I feel it. And uh, for real, for real. It's because rap rappers are getting paid more to say less. That's and that's what I what wrote it in is. my dissertation. I wrote a 450 page dissertation to become Dr. B. If you hit me up via email, kkb54 at madai.edu. That's kkb54 at madai.edu. Uh, I will circumvent ProQuest. That's the company that charges you to get it. Uh, and I'll hit you off with a PDF personally. So nice. uh, just it's not the best thing ever written. It's just my thing. Right. Uh, but you did you touch on the simple fact that hip hop is not how it used to be. Right. It's not. Public Enemy used to drop knowledge. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Harris One. What, what we're talking about is, and since you and I speak Chuck fluently, mm -hmm. <laughs> Chuck D said, uh, I believe it was in the uh, liner notes so for the children listening at home, we had albums where they actually had liner notes and artists were able to write messages to their fans and thank people and all that stuff. Yes. And often they'd even include lyrics to the songs. That was awesome. Chuck D once famously wrote, I believe in his public enemies, uh, Fear of a Black pa Planet. Rappers stay in school because if the knowledge is limited, eventually the rap will be. Ooh. And the, tie, the, the intimate tie between educate Rappers speak on what they know. Yep. And a lot of rappers don't because they speak of what they think they know. Exactly. And... Uh, for those of you unacquainted with rap vernacular, the worst thing you could do is front. Fronting is purporting or giving an image which is insincere or <laughs> incredulous. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, when Biggie died, oh, uh, some of his closest boss. friends even admitted said Biggie was not a gangster like that. He wasn't. He used to sit and listen to real gangsters, and they tell him narratives. And because he was such a gifted poet. He took it and was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Give me stories, right? Mm -hmm. If you watch most deaf in the Michael Jackson Monsters video, you're like, why is he in that? And all these other acting things. He's a very talented actor, but most deaf doesn't try to be hood. But we cannot deny that Christopher Wallace, God rest his soul, was gifted. And most mm -hmm. deaf is gifted and intelligent and brilliant. But this idea of what are we putting out there? What is value? Yeah. And back in, back, boy, back in my day, you had to be smart. You had to say something. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, they just. Versace, Versace, garbage. Versace. That's or it. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Or, All day. Or, uh, or they talk about drugs. Or they're so talking about. They in my bank account. Yes. Uh, I could do a whole rap. There's uh, no value. There's nothing. It's nothing. And it's teaching our kids. And nothing. it's teaching wrong stuff. It's influencing the wrong right. things. That's why I watch what my kids listen to. Well, I don't want you to get scared, but we are getting older. I know. Uh, I we, know. You and I can sit there. Uh, you're close to my contemporary, if not my little sister or older sister. We'll discuss that later. But this idea that we can watch the Grammys now, who the hell is that artist? Look, <laughs> I'm like, now? I don't do watch it anymore. Like, who is because that? I'm like, who is that? Who's that? I only know a few people, and I was like, they're not all that anyway, so, so why so, are they getting an award? So let us not fear Grammys. Let's not forget that they called our music young and ignorant when it was there. let us not forget that they called our music young and ignorant when it was there. But we, we argued for it on its own merits. Mm -hmm. And now here we are saying, man, that ain't nothing like the old Earth, Wind, and Fire. Or that ain't nothing like Luther and the mm -hmm. hip-hop turn. Right. Boy, I, I grew up on KRS, Rock him, Chuck D, and all this all garbage you listen to. Fat um, boys, digital <laughs> underground, I mean, there's pop. Entertainment, the entertainment value 
It, it, That's even disgusting. Be, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it's always going to be there. Disrespectful. I just don't want the young viewers and the people. You know, we can't lose touch with the young kids. Mm-hmm. Of the three, of the rappers of this generation, I absolutely adore Kendrick Lamar and Jay. Yes, Cole yes. They, yeah, and uh, you know, my wife. Big shout out to my wife Kelly. Uh, she's a big Drake fan, and you don't have to think Drake's the most cerebral rapper that ever lived. But there's something about Karis. One once said. People like to buy your spirit. There's something about Drake's spirit that people are buying. Yes. And I maybe see as that. he gets older, maybe he'll get more socio political. You know, he represents Canada the full. He loves his people. You know, he loved the six or whatever that is. You know, but the fact is, it's a matter of information and education and healthy food is a metaphor I use. Mm-hmm. If all you ate was crappy doo doo burgers, when That's I give you filet mignon, you wouldn't even like it. Uh, You'd be like, man. Love. You know, they, they call me a Whitley. I'm bougie. Oh. So, you know, I um, but I have to drop the knowledge because I refuse to be walking around sleep. Well, we like, we are a, a highly entertained but poorly informed electorate. We are. And mm. the fact is we're eating garbage food. You know what I mean? Stuff without any uh, healthy nutrients mm-hmm. in what we process. Mm-hmm. And, you know, keeping it you know, I, 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 I've I been a, a very, my, my pedagogy is rooted in black nationalism, and that is, as Malcolm X described it, wanting black people to control the politics and economics of their own community. Mm-hmm. And I ask you, Anthony, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but here you go. Do you have to be black to be a black nationalist? No, you don't. Absolutely not. You don't have to be gay to be down with LGBTQ. You, can, I got a T-shirt. I may be straight, but I don't hate. I may. I'm exactly. not Palestinian. I'm not Christian, but I got love for my Christian brothers yes. and sisters. I'm not Muslim, but I got. The bottom line is this: you can be conscious. You can be an ally. You don't have to be something to be down. Exactly. Just don't front. Center yourself. Locate yourself in the bigger thing. Yes. I mean, now when I, he say don't front, don't for be the, something for the you're new not. Ones, yes, be yourself. Be true to who you are. Don't act like you something and you're really not that. But okay? Somebody will pull that card. Somebody yes, will pull real. that card instantly. All of what a, what is old what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Yes. You lie, you got to tell a lie over that lie to cover to the next keep lie. On. And, and you got to keep your it going. Identity and your image. That's that's. So exactly. back to the issue of being a highly entertained but poorly informed electorate, uh, eating garbage news. Um, let's not divorce music, aesthetics, entertainment with education. Let's link them and just think about, you know, the, the garbage TV, love and hip hop, hip hop Miami, hip hop. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. Our own ratchetness, as the kids say, because the actual word is ratchet, ratchet to the highest ratchet level. word is wretched. But the fact is. World star. Yeah. That's it. Why do we enjoy watching our own coonery and buffoonery and just the most negative stuff about what is that about us? Is that a traffic accident mentality where you just gotta see how gross it is? Right. We like so much negativity pumped into us that we have a distaste for positivity and intelligence. Ooh. And KRS one once rhymed, there's no there's no self, there's no defense against common sense, confidence, intelligence, or excellence. And we just don't have a taste for that, you know. I got five, six, seven, eight, two. It's in my bank account. Yeah, oh. there's some, I know. I'm there's like... some rhyme styles that if you said it in the 1980s, you would literally get your A kicked. Yeah, you would literally you would get knocked because out. Because they were like, like yeah, oh, it's, it's, so, you're not so saying that. Imagine yeah. going against KRS-One, Big Daddy King, and Rock Him, <laughs> and saying Versace, Versace, Versace. Versace. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would literally get knocked yeah. out. They'd find yeah. you. You'd probably wake up on your back <laughs> like, what on the concrete with your shoes gone. <laughs> right, right. What happened? So, you can't go to the boogie down, down with that. that. You know, I saw a very uh, scathing indictment by the rapper Spice One from the West Coast. For those of you who really know your hip hop, man, he went on Migo so bad. He was calling them everything but God's children. He was in there in math. Cause just emasculating things and calling them terrible things. Uh, I just, you know, the fact that young, <laughs> it, it's something to see, really. It, the fact that the young generation, some of them, not all of them, can be so disrespectful to the architects uh. of hip hop and just the, the the culture and the and the intelligence and creativity of it, that ties back again to what is plaguing our communities mm-hmm. and what is it. It's all rooted in education and intelligence. 
you know. Yes. Uh, I am the Willy Wonka of Buffalo, and I, I run up on young people from Bennett Burgard, Riverside Lafayette, C- City Honors, Hutch Tech, Olmstead, uh, the five qualifying charter schools, big up to Maritime, Tapestry, Health Science, Buffalo Academy of Science Charter School, and now uh, Charter School for Applied Technologies since Oracle died. Rest in peace, Oracle uh, Charter School. Uh, I run up on our young kids. I'm like, hey, Anthony, man. Pretend Anthony's an 18-year-old <laughs> who, who went to Riverside. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I say, man, I got $118,000 value. After you're pelling your tap post, consult me for more. Uh, I have 118 Gs for you, man, over, te- over four years. You interested? And to my distinguished colleague to my left and right, man, half of our kids run away from me like they're allergic to education. That's sad. That's what, I, that's why I'm here right now. That's sad. To share the, you know, I'm not just talking about problems i want to talk about solutions but education is the key to empowerment education is power. is is it's it's the difference between being the worker and the owner being yes. the slave and the master yes and i say to my kids and I, you know some of you might not ever get to meet me so i'll say it on the radio and the video and the, and on the podcast you ever see a guy with salt and pepper hair i'm saying this to the young people and who listen you ever see a guy with salt and pepper hair, about 40, 50 years old, working the fries and McDonald's and stuff? And the kids go, yeah. And I said, what's the difference between them and you? Nothing but a couple of decisions and a couple of decades. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's, and it's, Father it's, Time is undefeated. Uh, yeah, it ain't going to stop for no one. It don't you stop. It Man, don't listen. Stop. But it ain't stopping for thing. no one. Right. We do have parents out there that are looking for scholarships, looking for help. And looking for someone. So that's good that you're out here saying that you're the link. And we will have all the information on Dr. B <laughs> up on the website. And you can contact me personally. You can inbox. You can catch him. If not, come to me. I will direct you to him. Because when I people say... In the city, people, if you are from the city coming up to Buffalo for a college education... You might not be eligible for say yes, but 100% of Madai students, I can only speak my own institution, are on scholarship. If I get you into Madai, you're coming in no less than a $13,500 scholarship. KKB54 at Madai.edu. Hit me. Email me. Anyone in Buffalo. I'm going to give my information out later, but we're we're having a moment right now. Do what you got to do. And we break bread. So Uh, If and parents of any student who's a junior particularly especially a senior because you're out of here in four months man yes there's two types of people people who are starting school in fall 2019 and people who are not right and with Come would on. say yes buffalo you have no excuse to not go and uh, none a degree is a difference between a job and a career nicole fast money here we go here we which go is, which is uh hourly a job or a career career hourly Job. Oh, no hourly job. is yeah, job. Which which is salary? A That's career. a career. Which, which has want. benefits? Career. And to all the listeners, and especially the parents of listeners, we as your parents, we want you to be independent, educated, lifelong, employable learners. Hear me? And I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention because I'm inviting parents. I know that their kids is about to be graduating. So I'm sorry, y'all. I wasn't. I'm trying to get the parents on here. All the churches in Buffalo. Everybody knows uh, somebody who's got a cousin who's a senior in one. And that's why I'm inviting them to let them know. It's like. We're here to drop knowledge. We're here to get the word out. We are not here just to talk. We're here to bring change. We want better for our children. I know in the Dalton house, you already know. Yeah, you, Nicole, slapped the book into your eyes. So. <laughs> God bless me. Some of you get, <laughs> <laughs> get the, the joint Take slapped this. out of their hands. <laughs> Nicole slapped the book into your eye. <laughs> but, right. but, but, but let me tell you something. Yeah. I had a young lady and her own mother on the oh, polar opposite of the Nicole Dalton awesomeness of parenthood. Her mom was, I'm going to censor myself here, so okay. crapping on her and saying, you ain't sh- shizzle, you ain't never going to be shizzle, and just dogging her, you ain't going to college, just, just hating on her. This young lady had no one to go to college with, no one to visit with. She came, guys, with her great-great-grandmother. Hmm. And many of my kids come solo. A lot of my kids, and God bless you, 
those of you who are listening, you've got business in college, they're first generation. Nobody got nobody showed them how to do anything. Mm. And they've got so much to figure out. I'm known as the Richard Pryor of teaching. That means I use colorful language, but I'm incisive with my humor. The fact is, I my favorite F word, Nicole's holding a breath here, is <laughs> finish. Finish. My favorite four-letter word, she's gasping again, is <laughs> H-E-L-P, help. Help. Help doesn't make you weak. And in college, you a damn fool if you don't get the help you need. There's tutoring. There's accessibility resources. To the parents in Buffalo who are listening and anyone who's downstate coming up and even apply what I'm teaching you to colleges in downstate, in the city, and anything, okay? Back when I, back in my day, they used to call them disability services. They're now called accessibility resources. Okay. You as a citizen have the right to have access to extra time on tests, separate testing locations. Yep. Tests read to you if you're eligible for that. Right. And it's confidential. Y'all, it's confidential, listeners. It's nobody's business. Last time I checked, a 4.0 is a 4.0. Yes, it is. Yep. If you've got to use any help with that. And don't be ashamed because some means, people well. have dyslexia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Remember Theo and then, before the Cosby Show got scandalized? Yes. How happy they were? Yes. To find out he had the learning Yes, distance. because they really thought they was, he was like, stupid, okay, he, he was, was stupid. Lazy. But then when the test came back, it showed he had dyslexia. And once you seek the help, there's opportunity out there to help you. And there's ways to help. Work yeah. around it and to learn how to adapt to it and work with it. And the simple fact is, having you on here, you drop in knowledge, and you're also letting know the parents how they can get their child into Madai, how they can Anywhere. contact you, right. how to get it going. I want to say something clearly that you won't hear. I'm not your average educator, okay? I want your child to go to the college that deserves them. Mm -hmm. If it's not Madai for whatever reason, we don't have engineering. If we don't have your major, that's fine. But if you're looking for vet tech, that's fine. There is a reason. Okay, let me get blunt here. Ahead, not everybody blunt. at you, not everybody in Buffalo goes to UB, not everyone in Rochester goes to U of R, and not everyone in New York City goes to NYU. I know. There's that's a right. reason that in Buffalo we have Villa Maria, Canisius, Madai, Damon, Buff State, UB, a plethora of all these colleges. You have a choice, okay? The power of choice, a free market, good things. But it's gotta be, it's gotta fit for you. And to my listeners of color, my listeners of any minority, whether like, there's a difference between being accepted and being welcome. Yes. Ooh, yep. Big shout out Ain't to the, the black truth. student unions across the nation. Big shout out to uh, my alma mater, BSU at UB. I wouldn't have my degree because the African American Studies Department would not exist if it wasn't for the black student union in 1968, taking over the admissions building and saying, screw this, we want to learn about us. We want our own program. Make it happen. Yes. Right. Students, you have more power than you know. I'm getting honored tomorrow. A uh, big shout out to the Black Student Union at Madai College. They're having their first Black Excellence Extravaganza. Oh, black Gala. Yeah. Congratulations. And, right. you know, that's something I want the listeners to understand, too. A Black Student Union does not mean kill the white man. Black unity <laughs> does not mean kill whitey. <laughs> and but, let me flip it on this, since this is such a Christianified uh, room. <laughs> I'm listening audience, you know, there's going to be a Muslim Student Association started at Madai. That sure. doesn't mean kill the Christians. Exactly. That mm -hmm. means we as Muslims, and I'm not Muslim, pretending I'm any of the groups I'm about to mention. God saying, loves all. That's saying that we as, what if there, and there are many Christian groups on mm -hmm. campuses. Let me go Muslim here. It's not saying, you know, what's the biggest stereotype? All Muslims are what? Say it. <laughs> Stereotype. It's okay. It doesn't mean you believe it. Uh, All Muslims are terrorists. Yes. Yeah. Right. I was scared say. to say the truth. I thought, well, what are we talking about here? You're right. No, yeah. What are you talking talk, about? I looked down. I was about to say it, but I'm like. Just I, was, I don't like saying it, but you know, I know stereotypes. Not, saying a stereotype. I heard a couple mean, of it. I listen, heard man, it. I, I heard. teach about the clan. Does that mean I say to go join the clan? No. no. Don't be afraid to say it. Say the name of it. Bottom line is this. We're not teaching. Uh, the founding of a Muslim student association is not to say, oh, let's kill all the Christians. It's to say, hey, you know what? We as Muslim students in a college environment have specific challenges and we need to be there to support each other as Muslims and allies. Okay. Now, substitute Muslim for black. We're not saying kill the white man. We as black students are throughout the diaspora are feeling 
you know, I just had a, a we're feeling, oh, let me just finish my phrase here. We're feeling specific challenges that we want to be able to discuss with each other and support each other yes. with our allies. Yes. With our yes. allies, right. Yes. Black student unions across the country have white, I don't want to say fans, white members and white supporters and, and white allies. But I have to pause because I looked in your eyes when I said African diaspora. Big shout out to Buffalo State College, man. They got a wonderful, my girl, Dr. G Goodwin. Uh, she has the African Diaspora Project. And I was uh, uh, on a uh, uh, panel discussing, huge panel, students, kids talking for hours about the pains of how divided African people are. Mm -hmm. You're not black, you're Jamaican. I'm not black, I'm Dominican. Mm -hmm. Dominican, don't get down with Haitians. And I'm the people afraid. Or, to... or you're not fully black because you have some white in you. That's mm -hmm. what they told me. Oh, you're oh, not you're black enough. Oh, oh yeah, I'm yeah, high yeah. yellow. Yeah. Oh, you were Whitley. I was like, I got the same blood like you. Oh. What is the problem that I have? I'm mixed. So what I'm mixed? But I still love my people and I mm. love all. Do you guys agree with the assertion I made that black people are the best people in the history of the planet at making other people rich? It's the truth. Oh, it's the truth all because right. there's a lot of architects. We put, okay? We put money we in everybody else's pocket. We did a lot of things and building. Own. A lot of things was built by us. Okay. A lot of people, so, dynamics. To and, the point of your witliness, yes. <laughs> do you agree with this statement? Black people are the most divided people. Oh, we yes, are divided. because we are. Okay, you guys and didn't hesitate fair. to say that truth. So don't ever let the truth, don't look down and be afraid to say things. You said, hey, that's true, Dr. B, now you're right. So in, this, right. in a Trump you're world, right. in a Trump world, number 45, there is as much <laughs> Islamophobia. <laughs> excuse me, I, here's the thing. Martin Luther King said it best. In the end, it is not the screams of our enemies we will remember. It's the silence of our friends. And we cannot be pro-black and allow what's happening to Muslims to happen. Ooh, yeah. You cannot yeah. be. You can't. I mean, I, no. No, I, you're Depending right. on the church, I'm an LGBTQ ally and fan. I, I I'm I believe God's love is for everyone. God loves everyone. And, and, and he fact, hates the sin, but he loves everyone. All right, we'll leave that in that. Yes. We're gonna leave that in that we'll leave lane. It there. I will not go into that lane today. <laughs> but, I will, but I will say that if you can't be pro Muslim and then hate the gays. You can't be pro gays and then hate the Jews. Oh, you I have family members that's gay. Yeah. And I have family members that's lesbians and right. we love them all and they know. That's, they, that's they know lie. that it was like that's you. I love you. My thing is you can't be against a form of oppression and for another. Mm -hmm. Either for oppression or anti-oppression. Right. So on that note, the idea of there being so much division, whether it's global, whether it's local, and everything else. It's everywhere. You know what I mean? Whether it's I mean, let's just touch since you guys got me here, you know, about the different ways black folk are divided. Your your city, your country, your New York City, your suburban, mm -hmm. you Buffalo, you Cheek Tawaga, your light skin, your dark skin, your Jamaican, mm -hmm. your Haitian, your Brazilian, and it's this, everywhere. Your, yeah. yeah, I mean the best example. Oh, you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth. The best the global example is the island of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. It's the same island. Yeah. And that island, you'd swear there was a Mason Dixon line on that island. Yeah, you cross yeah. one in, oh, you in the wrong yeah. territory. Yes. Call a Haitian, call a Haitian Dominican, call a Dominican Haitian. Woo! And see what I'm not that guy type of guy. Yo, they go. Have you, ever, have you ever seen Dom Dominicans look just like African? Yes. Like, I was, yeah, I was yes. in the DR, man. They, and they they thought I was one of them. Thank you. The guy was like, hola, blah, 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 blah. I was like, hey, hi, I'm <laughs> from US. And again, a big shout out to Dr. Goodwin with the African Diaspora Project over at Buff State and, and uh, di di Dr. G uh, Ken Gordon over there. They're you know, opening a dialogue where at least students in college, since we can't do it in the workplace, will be uh, Yes, because then that's you know, that's the issue. You get written mm, up, and yeah. we don't talk about religion. We don't, you know, Politics, where we religion, use the word. All that. Listen, yes. the fact is this, college, and that's another reason, listeners, that you have to make sure your families, your kids, you go to college. Yes. Is that's where you're going to be able to have these conversations. One of the most profound and beautiful things I've learned in my lifetime is some of the greatest places of conversation are black barbershops. Always. Yeah, I don't do the barbershops no more. I have about. husband take okay, them. Okay. Get along. But everybody yeah. was a right of passage. Yeah. And you went yes. and you went and you looked at and what we were talking about. But that's about like the women at the beauty shops so. too. Right. Hey. Well, they, they got big enough they made movies about them, right? Yeah. But the bottom line is those conversations and being able to talk 
about things relevant to you and your community. I mean, for God's sake, I made a course called Hip Hop and Social Issues. Mm -hmm. Do you realize how many hip hop arguments we had in the barbershop? <laughs> right, right. You know? Yeah, I, they be like, what you profile, know about hip hop? There's profile records out there in Bailey Avenue right now. I used to go to <laughs> and, uh, right where Hewitt, where the McDonald's used to be. Oh man, he, that that place closed. This chop of fellas. I got we yep. all. Everyone's got their own barber shop. But the bottom line is mm, conversations. I don't like that. being about being about conversations and not being afraid of having the hard conversations and not being afraid of going to sensitive things. Mm -hmm. That's that's cool. what it is. But Everybody's see, sensitive now to certain things over, now. Overly they sensitive. overly sensitive and they don't like the truth when it's right at Everyone's them. Everyone's scared. They'd rather you lie to them instead of telling them the truth. And then if you tell them the truth, oh, you're being a bully. No, I'm just being honest. I'm not going to waver who I am because you cannot handle the truth. Yeah. I mean. So I don't get received at places. That's on you because... I love you. I'll take the shirt off my back if I'm gonna help you, but you gotta want it. But the 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 community today, not even just a community, everywhere, everybody, Nationwide. everybody is, is out for themselves. Has to censor themselves, yeah, because there's going to be that one person that's real sensitive, and then and, calls a big and, ruckus. Oh, I know you can't say what that. you want to say nowadays I because I about that. you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying. So that's 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 a big issue mm -hmm. also. Dave Chappelle said this society is becoming B A N. Can't say any of those three words on this cast, but yeah. this ah, idea ah. of you know people being too sensitive. If you're going to study black culture and history, you are going to dig into pain. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Lynching. Yeah. Segregation. That's still going on now. Yeah, clearly. You can get shot on camera and not even get justice. Exactly. So. And so my mother said the only thing that has changed now is cameras. Yeah. But the hosing. They haven't done hosing, but they just shoot you now. Right. And it's they get away with it. On camera. On, on camera. camera. Like shoot just you in the now. Back and run like away. like yeah. let's talk about the Buffalo police that was videotaping just um and Mayor Brown goes on live talking about oh he's only gonna get suspension for 30 days. Excuse me, the guy is handcuffed dragged out beat down and other officers standing there just watching it and then you see them putting on their gloves getting ready to go participate with it really all of their pensions should have been taken they should have all been fired it's on video how are you going to take the oath to protect us when you're the ones doing the crime to us what so I, tell me where that when is that ever going to change that's why uh the criminal justice field as a, a an area of learning in college is i think more critical than ever before and i say to students recruit uh you know prospective students that are going to come to my college but i'll say to the listeners our generation it's really really the 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 rift between cop and citizen has become wider than ever Yes. And to the young people, I'll say it to you, and, and uh, if you feel me cool, if you don't, still, respectfully, email me and tell me what you think. Y'all got to fix this 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 chasm between cops and citizens. Here's where I'm weird as an educator that most people can't get me. I can love Christians and Muslims. I'm Hindu. Yay. I can be pro-cop and pro-citizen. Mm -hmm. I don't just think in binaries. Anytime I'm dogging Trump or calling it clean with Bush's corporate criminal stuff, and then I'll go and take, say what I have to say about the Democrats. Because people are so polar, they think, if you ain't salt, you're pepper. If you're not black, you're white. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm an equal opportunity offender. When, the mm -hmm. when you know, hello, during Obama's uh, time, New Orleans' whole water got polluted just bad then, too. So, mm. bottom line yeah. is... And, you know, while we're building walls, while Flint still can't drink their water, you know. But you, the bottom line know. is, this, thinking in terms of of just polar binaries and not realizing you don't have to just pick sides. You can look at convoluted angles of things everywhere. And what I'm saying to to enhance your intellectualism and make you a vibrant community activist is, you can agree to disagree. And the problem is, especially as black thinkers and black nationalists, and just sometimes we only get into a crew of our own. And it's easy to just be in a group of people who all think the way you do. Right. And that's bad. And negotiation 
and being able to see where you disagree agreeably. Yes, yes. And being able to have discussions and negotiate that. We as a country have become so partisan that we can't even do, you know what I mean? Right. We can't even get anything done. So that whole idea of realizing, and this is where we get deep, and deep, 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 deep. And this is what got Dr. King killed, is when we go beyond race yeah. and get to class. Mm. Dr. Martin Luther King in April 4th, 1968, was in Memphis. Do you know what he was doing in town? What was he doing in he town? He was a garbage worker strike. I what color are garbage workers? They're all colors. Mm -hmm. And as long as Martin Luther King was talking about black folk, he was like, oh, he's a troublemaking Negro. Mm -hmm. and when he started uniting poor people, he was planning a poor people's encampment. Mm -hmm. Once he started connecting poverty and war and saying, oh, who are they sending to die? Which has been relevant in every war since mm -hmm. and before. And then, then he got marked for death. Ooh. And the FBI set up Martin Luther King through a, a program called Coental Pro counterintelligence program led by J. Edgar Hoover. Look it up, check it out. Everything comes out about 40 to 20, 20 to 40 years after the Federal Bureau of Investigation set up Martin Luther King and tried to replace him with another leader. And, and if you watch certain movies, which uh, touch on it correctly, historically, they tried to blackmail him. I mean, Martin Luther King had a lot of sexual transgressions. There's a book by Michael Eric Dyson called I May Not Get There With You, the real Martin Luther King, where he talked about, and he just called it clean. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. When Martin Luther King, he called him the puff daddy of the civil rights movement. Not <laughs> this, but he sampled right. a lot of work. What work? The work of black female pastors and ministers. A lot of the, their speeches he appropriated and, and remixed and put out there. So a lot of people don't know that. But also he touched on uh, Martin Luther King was a very charismatic, good-looking man. Women are, are, are attracted to power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, if, they if are. If Biggie Smalls can get laid, you know Martin Luther King. <laughs> so, Ashley, the true, classy, true. if he can get it, come on now. True. Uh, Martin Luther King, regrettably, uh, had women throwing themselves at him. And the FBI actually uh, recorded uh, several bouts with him and women. And they tried to torture Coretta Scott King with it and try to really just, you know, do things. Try to it. divide the house. So, the fact of the matter is... Uh, the government in, of the United States, in, in its history, uh, and I'm speaking as a scholar here, not as a corp conspiracy theorist, but <laughs> the government, you know, from the ownership of black folk to the legalization of slavery to Jim Crow to the prison industrial mm -hmm. complex now. And the and, drugs. And the drugs and the because education Because the CIA system. put out it in our area, and then, then it went in over and it left just the African American and the Dominicans community and it went into their community. Now it's an epic problem. It's it's a problem we gotta resolve. But meanwhile, they're the ones that put it out there in the first place. Well, we do see a very stark contrast in the And all of a sudden the huggy warmy, oh you have a disease problem with mm -hmm. the opioid yes. epidemic now. Yes. And it's hard not to it's hard not to see that. And it's just a disease. Mm -hmm. the, the thing about it is, and, and I speak on, uh, about this in my uh, TED talk, you know, we live in a society where they will accuse the Black Lives Matter group of being a terrorist organization. Yes! And, and that's exactly what they think it just is. Just the idea of how dare you say Black Lives Matter. matter. You can't even matter. And they throw it all lives matter. All lives, blue lives blue matter. Blue lives matter. Uh, who was it? It was Dave Chappelle. If you're like, I'm hungry. And they're like, well, the people are all up hungry all over the world. It's like, yeah, what? So what, man? I still want lunch. You know I still I mean? want lunch. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Just that idea of to be so disrespectful when black people mm -hmm. whose lives are clearly being devalued. Yes. Not even undervalued. Yes. Devalued. You know what I mean? Um, to to for, for them to stand up and say that they matter, and then you get mad about it. And mm -hmm. I talk about this directly in my TED Talk. You obviously haven't seen it because you just Google it first, right? Right. I just, this idea yeah. that people try to twist it and say, Black Lives Matter more. We oh, all Lord, matter. Stop we're me, not, yeah, we're we're not, we're, they, uh, oh, but we not. We wasn't. We wasn't saying that though. It is, it, we're not saying Fox that all news. lives don't matter. We yes. don't say that. That's the point. But all, lives. Say, all lives do matter. Someone to say that someone is saying when they say Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter more. No, it's not like Black Lives Matter more. We're saying Black Lives Matter what? Two. Two. Yeah, yes. we, we, we matter, we matter just, also. So, <laughs> it's. Here's my thing. We all put on the shirt the same. We all bleed the same color. Right. 
So the simple fact right. is, stop looking at our color and look at us. It is see us well, because, right. like, let's go cops. back. <laughs> let's go back to Dr. King for a moment. He did bring white people in on helping us. There was unity back in the day yeah. with African Americans. And the simple fact now, everybody's out for themselves. They'll and slander the somebody else to trample over somebody else to get up higher. But meanwhile, you just did not help your sister or your brother because you so busy trying to get to the top. But what is at the top? You're gonna be by yourself. They did not do that. Malcolm X, when the cop said, it's too much power for that one man to have. You already knew they were setting him up. You already knew they was going to start division. When you are on one accord, we could do so much more and have so much greater power and influence, but everybody is so against each other instead of loving each other. And mm. that is what I can't stand. Growing up watching them, oh, you light-skinned heifer and this, oh, she thinks she all that because she light-skinned with long hair. No, uh, boo. My mother taught me to have class and standards. I'm sorry that you don't want that, but I want more for me. I want more for my kids. And having young African-American sons, I fear more and more for their lives because I'm seeing so many of the cops, there's rotten apples in every field. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. We have cops in our family. Mm -hmm. But the simple fact is, I worry every time when my son got his license, son, if they don't well, talk back, the talk. keep your hands the on talk. the steering wheel, keep your hands, every don't move, has to have tell the them where it's, it's at, Facebook don't police. move. <laughs> Hands on the dashboard. Don't move, don't flinch, don't do nothing. Tell them to do it or say, officer, it's right here on the such and such. Now, I tell my sons, you may be young. Miles is eight, Jalen's 13. Elijah already knows. Have your ID out now on your dashboard. Officer is right there. I'm keeping my hands right here. I don't want to think, and I'm the told them, this antsy. is what you need, antsy. Some is just trigger happy. Believe me, believe me. I've, I've been. Why do we scare you? The... Why does our color scare you so much that you want to want to kill us? I could be legit now. I'm drive past. This is this me. I I legitly like if I'm driving down the street and I see a cop car pull just driving and he could look at me and nod his head. I'm like, I'm looking in that mirror like yes. that. I hope he don't turn around. Even if I'm legit, Look, doesn't matter. Exactly. That's, that's, but that's just me. I don't know. It, no, that's me it. too. I've been pulled, so scared, scared I've been, to make you think you stole your own car. Yeah. Because no. I've been pulled over too many times for dumb stuff. I got pulled over for yeah. sitting in a in a in a uh, uh, a parking lot for longer than uh, five minutes. I'm waiting for my. You know, at the time she was a girl I was talking to. She was Caucasian, mm -hmm. and she was in a store. Cop pulled in. He was like, hey, uh, license, registration, this and that. I'm like, dude, I'm sitting here. And he was like, well, we we have uh, reason to believe that you're, you you might be trying to rob the store. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, this car, that hoodie fits the description. Here they go with of, description. Of somebody that's doing robberies in this neighborhood. Right. And and what happened was, you know, they, they antagonized me. Oh, well, well, what you got in the car? Nothing. At the time, I was young, nineteen. I'm not going to be. I'm. Hey, well, you can't. You can't look in my car. I didn't know that you can tell them. No, you, no, no. And this is I'm where scared. you get to teach them. So I'm scared. So they they come in there. They going through my car, ransacking everything. I just bought this car probably like a few days before. It was a piece of candy in there, mm -hmm. and you see the cop go in there. I got something. I got something. They're happy. And he looked, and the one cop looked at him. He's like, it looks like a, it looks like a juju bean. Threw it on the ground, stumped on it. And he said. And then the girl comes out, what are you guys doing to him? What are you doing to him? And the cop was like, who are you? She's like, I'm his girlfriend. And the cop says, uh, what do he say? He tells me, he tells her, oh, is he holding you against your will? And she's like, what are you talking about? Is he holding you against her will? Your will? She's like, he wouldn't let me go in the store. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Stay in here wow. while I go in the store. And then the, the cop told me, I don't want to see your face in this neighborhood again. Wow. And this was the pew. The pew, not Cheek Tawaga. Not Cheek Tawaga. This Amherst. was the pew. Not Williamsville. Not the, the, where you even live, Buffalo's East Side. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, where where are black youth and even black folk, period? Oh my goodness. Safe. And this exactly. idea that, you know, it's a consciousness in people, a consciousness in humans. And yes, it is a training. Because 
And big shout out to Sean King, uh, one of the best commentators we have in the nation. He's on the Tom Joyner uh, Morning Show cast. I still oh, love yeah. Steve Harvey a little bit, but uh, I, I still listen to Tom Joyner. I don't play Tom Joyner, okay. yeah. And Sean King makes it crystal clear. You can pull, you can take, when a white man shoots up a church, when a white person shoots up 15 people, you can take him safely into custody. Yes. You can take him to get Burger King. Yes. So don't tell me you can't, can't take. not take someone, you know what I mean? You can you can pull someone over and not shoot them. Right. This, exactly. This, this, is, this is clearly the case. So we need, it's, it. He, Sean King goes off. He's it like, needs to he stop. Says it's not even about like sensitivity and racial training. It's a mindset. Right. And this mindset is the lens through which we view black people. And uh, this idea of everybody want to run black, dunk black, rap black. Oh, act black, black. But nobody wants to be treated black. Yeah. Right. Not in a job interview, not in a court of law, and yep. definitely not by a cop. Chris Rock said that the best. Nobody says, I hope I get treated like a black man by this cop today. <laughs> nobody says that. No. And, exactly. and, and being able to recognize that. And here's the thing. This idea about pain. Okay, when it comes to the dialogue, black people among themselves and black people with non-blacks. Okay, when it comes to us talking to each other, we do it all day. We'll do it, and sometimes we'll argue because some of us will have different experiences because of what they experience, mm -hmm. from whether it's light skin Whitley to. Uh, a, a Haitian dude too, and they even captured it when Carlton and Will got yes. pulled over. Yes. Oh yeah. Didn't realize, yeah. Oh, I thought uh, he was helping Will's out by like... driving him slow. Right. Yeah. That. But here's the thing: when we get into let's call them intra-racial versus extra-racial, interracial versus inter-racial. Intra meaning among our own. Mm -hmm. Inter meaning between races. Mm-hmm. Not. I don't want to say white folk because some of my best friends are white. <laughs> but, I got family members that's white. This, but, I love them. But this the issue of white America in general yep. does not want to hear about three things. That black people are hurting. Yep. How black how bad black people are hurting. And most importantly, who hurt them. Unless it's black folk hurting themselves. Mm-hmm. That's when they turn that Black Lives Matter. Well, what about you Negroes? And that's the nice version. What about you Negroes killing each other in Chicago? That's all they want to when, mm. when black on black crime is issue, that's when they want to talk about who's hurting black people. Yeah. Right. But let's keep a clear crystal vision here. It is relevant that we need to check ourselves, that we need to stop killing ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. That doesn't change. That doesn't. We can say two. We don't have to think either or. We can say and. Yeah. We need to stop killing ourselves in Buffalo and Chicago and the like. And we need to not get shot by our the people whose taxes with our taxes we paid ourselves. Yes. Protect and serve. I agree. While they kill. So, right. So not letting people and that's this Fox News pendulum, you know, that 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 way of arguing a point. Mm -hmm. The minute you say something, well, what about this? You're not you're not addressing that. The minute you, I'm, well, I don't like the way you're tattooed. Well, what about Nicole's tattoo? Yeah, we're not talking about Nicole's tattoo. Let's we're focus on you, boo boo. Yeah. let's it's focus idea, on you, boo boo. It's a distraction yes. technique. Yeah, and by by, and I'm offended that you guys brought me here in February. You need to bring me in another month, you know. But this idea that they give us a time for us to discuss. Oh no, we talk right, about all right, the right, years. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Only, only and it's and it's the and it's the. Small amounts of the month. Not even always. Days. Not even. But 30 here's days. the thing: Black <laughs> History happens in our house all day, every day. Excellent. That's what it is. Well, McDonald said it. Three hundred sixty. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> did they say it? T, <laughs> T was at the our house. Jalen turned thirteen. We had a party. Okay. It was, the he's only 13, party. the hip hop party. Yes, I heard uh, your husband consulted an expert for that party. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the hip hop party. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> keeping our children balanced. Yeah. So, it was more like a high school party, I swear. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. But we had people watching the kids in the back and the ones that was in the front. Okay. So, the kids go walk to um, NOCO, you know, it's right at the sure. corner. So there's a belligerent Caucasian who we come to find out later had issues with our kind. Okay. 
So oh, the yeah, kids, that was crazy. the kids are walking back, and his dog is off the leash, and they said, "Can you please put your dog on a leash?" One and hers law, your dog must be on a leash, or you get fined. So the white dude didn't have his dog on a leash. Exactly. Okay. So then the dog comes over to the kids. Now, um, I don't mess with nobody else's dogs either. Okay. Um, right, I don't know if the dog has issues or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. So he starts calling them the N word. Now my son is with them. Right. So you already know where I'm going, right? Mm -hmm. So then they're coming back and he, outside, he was like, like Ma, Ma, look, okay. He was like, Ma. Da, 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 da. I see the guy starting to follow them. I said, excuse me, do we have a problem? Mm -hmm. And then, here come the men. I was like, I got yep. this. Mm -hmm. So then, why is a cop coming down to us, shining his light? Mm -hmm. Okay, boo-boo, you don't know me. First uh -huh. off, so the guy, the belligerent guy, calls the police on us when it was him that caused at kids. Right. So the light is on. I said, I um, remember that. why do you have your light on my house? He was like, you rent or you own? I said, excuse me. Wow. I own. Right. Question. And, and I said, who are right. you? He said, who am I? Then he parked it. I said, yes, boo. Who are you? I would have been. And then he, um, he says, I'm a police officer. I said, I'm a paralegal. So uh, what you want to do? We could, we could recite laws all day long. What you want to do? He said, well, I got a phone call. If she was call. a man, her tone would have got a shot on spot. But continue. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Enjoy, enjoy that. You do that well because a man said, what you want to do? I don't say nothing. Next, you know, he got warning shots in his spine. Because, you know? because now I'm aggravated because now you're treating my kids like they're criminals. Meanwhile, this is an adult man calling these kids who are minors the N-word, throwing rocks at them. I want to press charges. Yeah. So then, our next door neighbor, who's an officer, he was like, that guy is issues. And he was like, um, if you guys have any other problems, let me know. I will handle it for you. But he told the officer, he was like, these are good people. They don't bother anybody. Their son is having a party because he turned 13. The cop is like, is there alcohol or anything else? So now here comes my soon-to-be brother-in-law, my husband. They was like, I got this, like, go in the back. I was they like, did. no. They did. Because I, was, I was reciting um, wars. Let's go. Right. We could go back and forth. Right. I got attorneys on speed dial, boo. You messing with the wrong one. I, had, I know my knowledge. Right. I said, see, but if you don't teach your kids the law, you can get messed over. I don't know. You don't teach your kids the law. You can't search my car without a warrant. You we're, need probable cause. We're not trained to know our rights, let alone talk about Exactly. Right. If you look at the broader criminal justice system, the legal system, you are considered, what is the old adage, uh, a person who represents himself in court is as a fool for a client. Mm -hmm. So you literally have someone what? Not letting you talk. You're not even supposed to talk. That's how mm -hmm. in the ignorant you're supposed to keep with mm -hmm. someone else who knows the language. Mm -hmm. So the fact is not all of us can become paralegals. Not all of us can have, but let us go back. Let's root this historically beyond the personal narratives of in the 60s when the Black Panthers and Huey Newton and Bobby Seale would do their yes. thing. The, there's a one famous story of this cop like messing with this black man and, mm -hmm. and Huey had his rifle out like this and the cop did the typical cop thing and say, hey, get the hell out of here. He goes, and I'm, I'm gonna jack up this, the, the statute so don't quote me at all. Mm -hmm. He's like, by article 66923 of the penal code, I, I have the right to remain at a reasonable distance and, and monitor you. I'm over 150 feet, that is reasonable distance and I will monitor you. And the cop was like, Damn it. And they just, you know, yeah. have to deal with it. Yes. But this idea of knowing your rights and being able to speak your rights. But again, let's go back to this idea of not even being able to look a black, a white man in the eye. Yes. And the sur subservient and servile uh, body language we have to have, the, the, the actual just submissive, the way they yes. have to. When I first uh, saw my, when I, everyone who's got white friends, if you're of color, when I saw my first white friend raise their voice at a cop, when I saw a white girl curse a cop out, yes, mm, I was just like, <laughs> you know, it's like, and all these How? things, and right. it just it, centuries of that. You know, the, what the, the effect that has on the black community psyche? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's if you go back. I mean, 
F dash dash the police by NWA in 1989. That was a sentiment black folk BC, ad. before Christ, <laughs> I had that on lock in my headphones. Yeah. Yes, NWA was real with it. But the thing is, black folk have been thinking that for centuries. And only in, in 1989 did O'Shea Jackson and Andre Young and them put it down on wax. But the fact is, they you didn't think they felt that in the 20s when they're getting lynched? Right. Mm -hmm. You know they what I mean? In the 40s and the yeah. 60s. But it's sad that they're 60s. still getting if, lynched now. If anybody felt, if anybody should have had that song back in the day, it should have been in the 60s, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right, but, right. But, but the idea, here we are. Fast forward to 2019, and we've got Trayvon Martin. You can get shot. Uh, you can get choked out for selling cigarettes. You got, you know, yeah. you just, I mean, everything across the board. There's not subtle hints. There's spit in your face yes. examples of you don't matter as much. Yeah. And that's so, exactly where it is. So the prefacing question Nicole brought to me is how far, how, what is it? How far have we come? And how also, far have we come I mean, and how far we've gone back? Well, sometimes when you turn on the TV and. It's we depressing. see a black man getting shot on camera. They shoot white kids now on camera too. That's how this but is not beyond. As many. Not as many, not as many. But this idea of like a cop mentality, that kind of thing. I'm not anti-police. Yeah. I'm pro-citizen. And before you're a cop, you are a citizen. Exactly. Yes. And you know, if a nerve gas is sent by Iraq or something, much love to my Iraqis, not you. Let's just say Syria. Okay. Much love to my Syrians. Mm -hmm. um, when it hits America, it's not just going to kill Republicans. It's not just going to kill Killing Democrats. all of us. If that happens, you know, if you, as a New Yorker, you know, we all got together in 9-11 and got together and all this stuff. Oh, my God. And that, that, that faded pretty easy after a while. I mean, right now, and right. I have to speak on this in such a public forum, they are running out of benefits for the 911 responders right now. They're literally, like, cutting off the rest of their benefits. Okay? Mm. Meanwhile, Flint doesn't have water. But you're going to declare a, a national emergency against brown people in down south to build a wall. Oh. Let that's, me tell you, horrible. that is not a national emergency. I said it on Facebook. I say it on live. A national emergency is when we had Hurricane Katrina. That. When we had, that's a national emergency, not no wall. Who cares about a wall? Drugs come in through the air. Drugs come in through the boat. Drugs come in through cars. Oh. Hello. Number 45, get it together. No, what, Seriously, he's a little kid. He, he throws a tantrum. He needs to just be shut down, impeached, thrown out, keep it moving. But then we got to worry about Pence because people sleep on him. He's the real trigger. You got to watch. Know, you know, We're going to corral no coal here. You know this. Right. Right. You know, you know this. You went there. Okay, but the point he's is, he's a sleeper. Again, People ain't paying in, attention. I'm watching. In Trust. The, in the name of why you brought me here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I'm you. sorry. Well, no, it's it's so true, much. True, but, but this speaks to let's, oh. let's bring this home and bring this back to the idea of they gonna keep doing they stuff. Mm -hmm. We gotta do us. We it's time for us, us to join us. together. It's this idea of respecting each other protecting each other and educating each yes. other yes and that's nothing but you know I, I i'm inspired by nicole spirit i personally adore her yes her husband is my brother but this this fact that she's like it's time it's been it's time been for time. 400 years it's, it's been, been time, time for the longest right and it's so funny and i'll tell you about african-american studies it's been time. There's, it's so funny. And my mentor, ja, Professor James G. Pappas, who just retired, founding member of the African American Studies Department, was part of that group in the 60s, like when it was founded. Mm. He just retired. The man was, he's my academic godfather. But, okay. you know, and he, he's at my sister's funeral, my wedding. You know, I love the man dearly. The fact is, he sits back, he was a creative class called ja, Blacks and Films and taught jazz courses, whatnot, you know. And he would sit there and watch young cats. To get that fever, Nicole. It's time. We got to do this now. And I was I used to laugh at it at him and said, "Man, Professor Pappas, you've seen this for decades, haven't you?" Said, "Yep." <laughs> and it's great, but having that momentum and keeping that momentum. Yes, that's the you know hard I mean? part. That's the hard part. A national movement. We saw the rise of uh, the first black president. Yes. And. The best, not the best, but one of the best vestiges of him being here is uh, MBK. Are you familiar with that? My Brother's Keeper Initiative. Mm -hmm. They're doing big things. Big shout out to MBK yep. in Buffalo. Holler at your boy, Dr. B. Bring me to the boys. Bring me to the kids. This is the 
authoritative group in the Buffalo right. and nationally. It's Barack Obama's initiative about mentoring and developing young black men. I would love to get Barack up in Buffalo. Man. So Manning Marable. My man. Man- Manning Marable, the man who wrote the authoritative uh, uh, biography of Malcolm X, uh, who revealed that Alex Haley, uh, the author of Roots, set him up with the FBI. Um, Al- Alex a Haley. lot of people set Al- him up. Alex Haley. He had a part. Alex Haley, who wrote Roots, then did Al- uh, Mal- Malcolm's autobiography. Yeah. He set him up. Mm. Malcolm, uh, Mal- Manning Marable, mm. he, t- he just talked so much about, Khan. about how African American studies needs to be three things descriptive, corrective, and prescriptive. Descriptive, it has to describe what has happened and is happening to black folk. Corrective, it has to set the record straight. Yes. We're not all th- 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 thugs, hoods, criminals, gangs, exactly. and athletes and rappers. Uh, and then we are be, doctors, to be architects. To prescribe the remedies of what is ailing black America. Because well, as Nicole touched, what ails black America spreads out of black America after. Mm-hmm. Whether it was hip hop or crack, yeah. when it was contained in the black community. Well, you know, it's a black issue. But then when it got out and the white kids started doing it, oh, the, yes. the, the national alarm rang out. Oh right. my God, we got oi boy. So, oh my God, we got it this. So, oh, we have to do this. Mm-hmm. You should not have planted it. Well, but here's the thing let's go back to the Black Panthers. Okay. Oh, they're a problem. Why? Because did they not remember that they were giving food after school programs, supplying groceries, and making program. sure that That's the right. kids was being taught? Tupac Shakur's mother was one of the Black Fiend Panthers. Shakur, yes. And the simple fact is, then look at what they did with Huey Newton, injecting him, poisoning him with the drugs, and he then, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Back let's Co-Intro create. The, yes. Uh, they, the, the same uh, government organization, Co Intel Pro, that destroyed uh, Martin Luther, that wanted to destroy Martin Luther King and mm-hmm. set up Malcolm X, uh, declared the Black Panthers as the one of the biggest menaces, if not the biggest menace to America at that time. Yes. Mm. So to destroy them on the inside with traitors. Yeah. Even Jesus had Judas. Yeah. Uh, we um, know about them, Judas. We all to, got to them. To destroy them, but then mm-hmm. to do what, guys? To hijack their memory. Yeah. And take their memory from us, like when. You talk to your average Fox News fan, and I'll say because it's I'll call it clean. They'll think that the Black Fist is equal to the Klan hood, and it's not. The Black Panthers never attacked white folk. A lot nope. of people don't know there was a conscious it's section in, in the '60s of the White Panthers. Many don't know that conscious white folk who followed the temple of the Black Panthers and did the same thing: community policing, breakfast programs, education programs. The idea that the Black Panthers got demonized and vilified, and then, like, you ever see the movie uh, 300? Yes. yes. Where he says, I will p- pull the tongues out of anyone. No one else will ever know you existed at all. Mm. That's what he told Leonidas. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what they do with conscious people. That's what they do with conscious organizations. And now, young kids right now, I mean, Tupac has been romanticized, but. Young kids today, they don't learn about the Black Panthers. And no. when it's brought up, I mean, my own alma mater, man, the University of Buffalo, when I was a student, they had a magazine called The Generation. They had two publications, Spectrum and Generation. I'll never forget, The Generation had a cover on it where they had a white dude with a swastika on his forehead facing, there was a drawing, facing a black dude, and on the black dude's forehead was a black fist. They equated the black fist with a swastika. Mm. That's what people do. And since Nicole is into the personal anecdote about her son in the street, to illustrate it, you know, that's what happens a lot in my classes. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's what After Hours was a lot for. Right. I was walking in the hall, connecting Clemens Hall to uh, Jacobs Hall, whatever hall it was, and somebody had just put up a flyer for a Black Panther meeting, and this white girl walks up right behind him and rips it down off the wall. I was just walking to class, and I just noted myself, wow. The nerve. The ball. You know what I mean? And it's like, but you didn't, you know, you don't even... Yeah. You know, I got to tell you. And, you know, don't do that. The Nation of Islam, I was one of the two million men at the original 1995 Million Man March. I was there. Okay. And, you know, with the demonization and fear of Muslims now, but particularly the Nation of Islam throughout their founding as a menace, the Nation of Islam has never attacked black fo- a white folk. They don't jump out of bands and beat up white people. The fruit of Islam is a, a unarmed security force. Mm-hmm. They rule with respect and things like that. And it's just like, I've never felt more safe 
than an ocean of bow ties. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just this idea of how we don't, you know, whether it's black Christians, black Muslims, and anything in between, just conscious people getting together in what, what uh, author Cornell West, author of Race Matters, uh, talk about principle coalitions. On what principle can we stand on together? You know what I mean? Yes, mm -hmm. that, that's true. And whether, and that's the, but that's America, man. That's, mm -hmm. you know, what does gay marriage, don't answer this, this is just coming at you. I know. You. What does gay marriage have to do, I'll say it to the viewers, with your ability to feed and educate your child? You know what I mean? Right. The problem with America, in a capitalist system in particular, is there's a some zero mentality, which is to say, if you get a scholarship, you take taking my scholarship. If you get this job, you take it my spot. You take it my spot. Some zero <laughs> mentality. Mm -hmm. In order for Kush to win, Doctor B. Sorry, don't say my name now. <laughs> uh, in order for Doctor B to win, Nicole has to lose. Or for Nicole to win, Doctor B got to lose. Rather than say we can all win. Well, exactly. Like yo, let's help each other out. That's what we're here we for. We can all right. win. And what Manning Maribel, I want to go back to him again. Is Manning Maribel, God rest his soul. He talked about who do they fill in these prisons? The uneducated and the undereducated. Yes. The unemployed and the underemployed. Mm -hmm. So again, no matter where we go, if, if Dr. B is gonna be in the room, we're gonna always somehow bring you back to education. Yes, right. education and, is power. And Nicole, I think we agree, oh, well, we have disagreed on the damn thing, but this <laughs> idea of not thinking in binaries. In black history, since that's what I was about to talk about, right? Um, <laughs> W. We're here e. just talking w. and dropping knowledge. W.E.B. Du Bois versus Booker T. Washington. They try to set these two brilliant, beautiful black leaders against each other. Yep, they sure try. And look at this parallel through our history, and I talk about it. If anyone takes my stuff, you better cite your source. People always take my stuff and then appropriate it. Du Bois versus Booker T. Just cite your source. Otherwise, it's plagiarism. Mm -hmm. Booker T versus uh, Booker T versus uh, W. B. Du Bois. Uh -huh. Malcolm versus King. Yes. Biggie versus Pac. Yes. Peanut butter versus jelly. I like both. That's right. right. I can like both. I love right. all of them. And here's the point. People always ask me, "You like Biggie or Pac?" I said, "Yes." And they get mad because they want you know my dad can beat up your dad. I like J. Cole and Kendrick. Oh, I love J. Cole. Mine is the cuss words. I need to find the non-cuss ones. Mm -hmm. But J. Cole drops a lot of knowledge and a lot of facts, like Nas Ashudam. Yeah. He dropped a lot of knowledge and a lot of facts. And if people really listen, Tupac did too. Was always warning what's ahead. But nobody wanted to listen. No. So here's the thing. They well, want to shut you up, though. Going back to Booker T versus Du Bois. Uh, Booker T advocated for vocational training, mm -hmm. and Du Bois uh, advocated stronger for uh, higher education. Right. Booker T said, "We need to know how to work with our hands." And Booker T and Du Bois said, "Hey, hey, hold on! But who are these black scholars who are going to be training these people?" And Booker T was so powerful; he had the right to enthrone or destroy other black people. And Du Bois came at him so strong that Du Bois is uh, uh, that Booker T's speech at the uh, Atlanta Exposition, Exposition, he called it the Atlanta Compromise. Biggest <laughs> diss ever. He called him a compromising Negro, which is, that's fighting words back in those days. Yeah. And in fact, in the, one of the greatest books in the history of black literature, The Souls of Black Folk, 1903 by W.E.B. Du Bois, chapter two of his book was called Of Mr. Booker T. Washington and Others. That's like if Biggie's that's, whole that's, second oh album. That's God. like if Biggie's whole second album only went at like that kind of. That's how hard he went at him. So what is the point here? People say I'm for Booker T. I'm for Du Bois. I think Booker T's right. I think Du Bois right. And we argued so much about each other's point. We didn't listen to either of them. Right. We didn't take over the colleges, and we damn sure didn't take over the vocational training. Mm -hmm. So who was right, Booker T or Du Bois? Both. Yeah. They both were right. Who's right, Malcolm or King? Both. Both. Who do you like, Boogie or Pac? Both. Nas or Jay, both. There's this this binary thinking. We spent so much time arguing about who was right. We didn't do what either of them did. And one of the greatest, uh, we're still not. One of my best, one of my best black friends. Because I've got a lot. Of black <laughs> I got friends. a lot of black friends. Big shout out to my man John Hannibal, the most qualified black man I've known in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. This brother graduated from law school and medical school. One okay. Black. Wow. And he's like, cool. we, he said we should have listened. We should have listened to Booker T. 
because all these jobs and that's that's that Booker T said there's as much dignity as tilling a field as writing a poem <laughs> and if it ain't about that J-O-B you know what I mean I know right. a lot of educated fools I know people if you get a degree Ooh. that you can't use God bless you and yeah your mama gets it oh my baby got a degree on the wall that's lovely but functional literacy mm -hmm. functional education functional employment right you know what I mean mm -hmm. I know a lot of PhDs are out earned by Geico reps okay <laughs> Yeah. Right. I know a lot it's of true, though. business right. degrees. Most people I know blow up with a business degree, a bachelor's in business. Both people with masters. I think that's how you use it's, it. It's how you yeah. use it. When yeah. I was a young lad, uh, there was a dude I met in the back of, you remember the move that stores, it's best it still exists now, Spencer's. Uh -huh. Back in the 70s, they had all the freaky posters yeah. and stuff. This dude was working at the counter at Spencer. He had a, a, a degree in chemical engineering. Mm. I said, man, you got a chemical engineering degree working here? That's real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's real. Yes, so is. my question to the viewers for you to think about it, and message in and inbox and email me, tell me what you, you know, think. Are you getting your degree for yourself, your family, or your community? That's where black empowerment comes in, because if you're only getting it for yourself, and the second you get out, you get your money, you get out. And out of, I'm not saying you got to live in poverty. In mm -hmm. Right. Ice-T what said, Ice-T of all people, there is no black community, white community. There's a rich community and poor community. Yes. And I don't want to effing live in a poor effing community, he said. Uh, hey. So, but my you point is You got the power to change it. But be, yeah, but being able to uplift your people. Yeah. But you know, there people. is some, like T.I., he just started purchasing homes to build back up Atlanta where mm -hmm. he grew up. Mm -hmm. Queen Latifah, it was just talked about on the news today mm -hmm. about her going back to where she grew up mm -hmm. and building 14 of, she's spending $14 million to build up her community where she grew up. Mm -hmm. So they are now, but where's everybody else? Right. And it's like, come on. You ever notice like rich white men fall out of the sky and buy an NFL team? Yep. People yeah, you never even heard from? of. Like, where did he come yes. from? Right. How yes. That? How that yes. Happen? You know, this idea of LeBron, God bless him, making that magnificent oh, school. Oh, my. Big up. You know? And I'm not a LeBron fan for Hater. basketball. Nicole has no, no just PhD for basketball. Hater. Hater. Just for basketball oh, because yeah. he's not the greatest. That's why. But the simple fact is he can't throw a three-pointer. three, uh, three pointer. So, um, yeah, until you can start throwing three-pointers and uh, hitting the hoop from center, from court, then talk to me. All right, I'll be Until back then. for the athletic yes. argument next time. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But the simple but his fact community is, in but development. he built a school. Much respect to that. That is a big, that's a big respect. Much respect to that. Right. Now, we have Magic Johnson that did a movie theater. Really, dude? How about doing something better for that? He's got a plethora of actual ventures. And, you know, a lot of people, I guess, I guess what we need to concern ourselves with is we we look for the media for stories of these rather than an underground network like this podcast where we get to find out who's not, out there not the jay z's but the yay z's you yeah. know what i mean like right, someone right, who right, never, right, right, yay, right. someone who you know he ain't even yes. ain't a performer he ain't an athlete he ain't an entertainer he's just a grassroots brother a grassroots sister just building their community and it is those soldiers who have been and just like in hip-hop the underground is where hip hop lives. It's mm -hmm. those underground soldiers who are fighting the good fight. Like, but I still have to bring it back to education. Yes. And you know, this idea that we are going to college most often for degrees, but nobody pay nobody wants to become an, an educator. No. I'll tell you straight up. Oh, I at most you. college at most colleges, education is not the top major. <laughs> At my own college, Madai College, mm -hmm. Vet Tech. We are the top five Vet Tech programs in the country. Bam, you know, and all this other stuff. And I'm not dogging my education program in Madai or any other education in any other college. But peop it, it says a lot about us as a society that we don't pay in the good way cops, mm -hmm. firemen, and educators. Mm -hmm. But we'll romanticize the shizzle out of them when they die in a tragedy. Yeah. And put them oh, on a t-shirt. Oh, yes. And rest in right. right. peace. Chris ooh, Rock. Ooh, I got to make my joke. Right, Chris Rock is so funny. He <laughs> said, very, very we need to pay funny. cops better because you get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> he said, True. we're paying for a little bit. And, and to Nicole's point of bad apples, Chris Rock made a joke of, 
there's some jobs that they can't have bad apples, like pilots. He said. He said, oh. you can't have a couple of pilots. Well, most of our pilots like to land safely. <laughs> but we got a couple of bad apples who crash without a... Like, they're just... And that's the thing about it is... <laughs> to, when it comes to cops, is the idea of... There are not enough good cops that are stopping mm-hmm. the bad cops. Right. And that has con- con- complicated and convoluted the perception and relationship the black community in particular has had with cops. Mm-hmm. And, you know, KRS-One had a song, Black Cop, Black, black Cop, Black Cop, Cop Black Cop. cop. Right. I'm shooting black people and we all are gonna drop. Yeah. And this idea of, you know, a black cop is not a house Negro, it's not a sellout per se, but, you know, it, it, we have to think with respect of how it, the challenges and how hard it is to be a black cop, but man, before you're black, before you're white, before you're blue, you bleed red. Yes. Everybody. We red. all bleed the same. But the pain of black mothers losing their children just going out to a no-co run, getting Skittles and yes. iced tea, it, 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 it's something that this country is still not listening to and still hasn't heard. So for African-American studies in Black History Month, is this idea of listen to primary voices. I don't care what Bill O'Reilly or Tucker Carlson have to say about Malcolm X. I want to know what Malcolm has to say say about about Malcolm. Malcolm. And when we talk about primary sources, hearing the words of Malcolm, reading the writings of Malcolm, hearing the words of Dr. King, reading the words of Of Dr. Dr. King. King. And let's not get on a sexist tip. Let's go with the strong, powerful black women. Ida B. Wells, Google. This is a Google world. Yes. The education system doesn't teach you that Ida B. Wells was Look, Malcolm X before Malcolm. They don't even know, these kids don't even know what a dictionary is. Yes, they don't. My mother has encyclopedias from back in the day. Encyclopedia. Still good. Encyclopedia. What is Look, that? My kids, that's what, that's what my <laughs> kids said game. when they oh, went to my mother's. Okay. They was like, Nana. <laughs> when they got older, they was like, Nana. Um... She would for the summer. My mother, you would have fun, but you also learn during the summer with my mother. We get a book. After you read it, you have to write what it was about. Then (laughs) she would tell you, pick a topic you're going to do research on. My mother was no joke, okay? You want to do anything, you better learn first. Knowledge is the key. And so we do that with our kids. When we go on trips and vacation, we go and we learn the history of the place, but we still have fun at the same time. Like Washington D.C. That's why she left the private sector and transferred so easily because you, she had it in her DNA to switch to paralegal. Mm. Mm-hmm. There's a thirst for education, a way of thinking about it, mm-hmm. rather than being allergic to education. Right. Well, let me right. tell you. Also, my grandmother, she finally talked to me over Thanksgiving weekend when I went down to Long Island. Mm-hmm. She used to be in the fields picking cotton down in Florida. Mm. And I was like, Grandma, I didn't know you used to be out in there. She was like, yeah. And the story she told, the kids was like, wow, Granny. They call her Granny. But she's my grandmother, but she's their great-grandmother. We're sitting in the room, and I was like, look at all the generations in this room right now. My granddaughter's playing with her great cousin. And my cousin, and we was like, how many generations is in the room? But my grandmother moved up to New York. She got a house. She worked for the union, 11, she worked at the nursing home, but she was head of the union, 1199, Mm -hmm. until she retired. I would go with her, well, I'm I'm the oldest, um, so I went with her everywhere. They did picketing, we was picketing. Mm -hmm. No justice, no peace. She said, your word is your mouthpiece. We don't say no to people. Uh, we. This is what she said. Your yes is your yes and your no is your no. And you stand by your character. You, you say what you say and you stand behind it. Don't ever back down. And more power is through the knowledge. And my mother made sure of that too. And the simple fact is, if we don't teach our kids, who else will? All right. And on top of that, when God gave me permission to leave the place I was at for 10 years working, mm-hmm. my husband wasn't happy about it, but I'm being obedient to the Lord. Mm. I went and got my college degree in legal for a simple fact is because my next assignment was fostering. Mm. 
Mm. And CPS, if you don't know the um, laws, they run over the parents. They do things oh, underhanded yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Well, they met this one mama here. I <laughs> kept notes. I kept the tweets. I kept everything, every document. I had to take them. My husband and I, I said, babe, God said we got to fight. They tried to remove a child from our home and give the child to the grandparents without the mother's permission and without the court's knowledge. Mm. And without me knowing, knowing the legal rights, that would have happened. Mm. They asked me, why are you fighting so hard? This ain't your child. I said, this is God's child. And what you're doing is underhanded and it's not by law. We took them to state. The judge said, thank you for your diligence. My husband said, that was all my wife. She said, what you going to school for? This is what I was in college going to school, back to school for. Mm. I was like, paralegal. She was like, you're going to be one hell of a paralegal. Mm. She said, we need more people like you. Mm. And then God said, now you see why I sent you on this mission? So for the young Nicoles listening, I need you to know something. I am the assistant director of admissions at Madai College, and I'm a three-time UB graduate. UB and Madai, my current home and my alma mater, have partnered up. Where we have a three plus three program, where your first three years of your undergraduate are at Madai. Your fourth year of undergrad is your first year of UB Law School, and in two more years, you're done with your law degree. Mm. Three plus three. So people listening who are say yes eligible, and anyone in the city, I still got a scholarship for you. We can make it work with your Pell and your tap. We can we can work this. But for say yes students in Buffalo, you can have four of your six years. You, it's, you finish your law degree in six years instead of seven. Four of those years are going to be picked up by Mayor Byron Brown in the city of Buffalo. Wow. Listening to Nicole, a brilliant mind who, if she had your opportunity, would be a JD right now. Mm with her intelligence and work ethic, but she doesn't didn't have the opportunity that some of you listening, you're running away mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. You're literally running away you from. Need to run. And let me tell you something. If it wasn't for lawyers, you wouldn't be in school, mm-hmm. number one. Exactly. You, you remember that favorite, you know your favorite white teacher, Miss Miss Johnson? She wouldn't be your teacher if it wasn't for a lawyer by the name of Thurgood Marshall. Yes. And Thurgood Marshall had a hero at uh, Howard University Law School named Charles Hamilton Houston. What is the point I'm bringing up here, and this moving back to education, is mentorship. Mm. Her grandmother wasn't a lawyer, but man, that woman put you, injected you with the DNA to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. She made that love of learning. But when you get into the field that you're in, there would be no Dr. Martin Luther King if there wasn't for Benjamin Mays. You know who Benjamin Mays is? Who's Benjamin Mays? He's a man who got Martin Luther King into the ministry. Didn't know that. You know Martin Luther King's uh, doctorate's in? Mm. He's a PhD in theology. Who put him on that path? Benjamin Mays. Didn't even know that. That's huge. Mm -hmm. So, who made you a paralegal, Nicole? Like, what, what, who said, like, this is the field? Like, where did that come from for you? Well, I always, okay, so. She's like, I hated insurance companies. I wanted to school. I hated dealing with people in claims, and I hated lawyers. I was like, Growing I gotta up. get into law myself. That Growing way? up, I wanted two or three things. Maybe no. I love to travel, so I wanted to either be a lawyer okay. or a police officer. Mm-hmm. Because I graduated in high school with A's in criminal justice and things of that nature. Right. And I love to argue and debate. My mother always said, you are... Anyone who knows Nicole, can I get an amen from the corner? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. I know. Shamark, Shamark, you're the strongest man I know. <laughs> Continue. Because I'm Stop. like, you need to show me. You need to know. My mother was like, you are going to be a prosecutor. You are going to be... Imagine her prosecuting you or her defending you. Oh, man. It's passion and intelligence. Um, it's, it's arguable you can find a bigger Malcolm fan than me. Uh, James Ponzo, one of my favorite Jedis of all time. He had a tattoo of Malcolm. And Malcolm made the point that West Indian Archie, one of his uh, criminal... ...way, he said... West Indian Archie could have been a lawyer, an architect, a scientist. He was such, his mind was so sharp. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And using your intellect 
for good, not evil. I don't mm-hmm. want to. I don't want to preach here, but this idea of using your focus, your rage, and your intelligence for something that way, and that's a, again bringing it back to education. education. That's why the greatest educators I know talk about if a kid can learn every damn rap lyric on the album, don't tell then me you they can't. Come on, don't tell me you can't master your your phonetics and you know but, what I mean. But right. the vocabulary. So don't, don't come rapping to me about the song and everything else, but you can't tell me what you got for homework and what's to do in the book reports. No, we're not going to play that. Not up in my mm-hmm. house. My mm-hmm. husband. And I will shut you down real quick. Biggie and said, either you sling, crack, rock, rock, or you got a wicked jump shot. Those must not be the only two ways out of the hood. Exactly. So you were saying, I'm sorry. Because the books can get you out of the hood. Books have permanence. Yes. Uh, for those young kids who are Substance. listen to this, you know, there's, there's short money and long money. Yeah. Biggie, like said, the long Biggie money. said, verbatim, if you are a drug dealer, you will eventually die or go to prison. Mm-hmm. It is a fact. It is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that idea of and that, and that that's what I want to say to my uh, uh, my our viewers and listeners is it's hard to soar like an eagle when you're rolling with a bunch of turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> and when you go to college, you have to understand that. And I say that to a lot of my students, particularly those who say yes, pun intended, to education is you're gonna go this way, and there's gonna be some friends you're gonna fall out with. Yep. You're not going to talk to them anymore. But 10 years from now, they're going to be working at Dollar General and you'll be finishing your law degree. Yeah. And you have to make that conscious decision. Well, we, we make too much money to even get help with state. I was like, but we pay taxes, but you make too much money. So mm. I paid out of pocket and my husband and I, and he was like, just focus on school. Every semester I met, made the dean's list. With newborn foster babies in the house mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, I was like, "Newborn well, you, foster I was like, babies, not you, even just new foster are, babies." I was She's like, "Could have come in with things that yeah. you don't even know." Yes. So it's mm-hmm. like you're up, and to make <laughs> deans, you have to be three point something. Right. And the simple fact is, my lowest GPA for a semester was three point seven nine. My other one's 4.0, 4.0, 4.0. And people say, how you do it? I said, nothing but God and my passion for what I'm doing. And I'm being obedient. And I'm making sure that I can. So the kids, Jalen and Miles and Elijah, daddy's over here getting his bachelor's, doing his homework. I'm over here doing mine, getting my associates. But here's the simple fact. We are sharpening our children. We are letting them know, no, don't settle. Always go more. When you make this level, now let's make another goal. You make you this, going, now let's right. go this way. And every year I told T, Mr. Hoof, I told him, <laughs> I write out my vision plan for 2019. Mm-hmm. And then come 2020. And the simple fact is, right now, this is just us laying the foundation. But God got a big studio for us waiting for us. And the simple fact is, it's like right now we're seeing who's rocking with us. And who's just sitting waiting. And whoever wants to jump on ship later, but the ones that's with us grinding it out with us and out like his wife, my husband, they see our passion in this and they see what we're doing and what we're trying to do. Okay. We didn't set this up. God set this up. Okay. So the simple fact is he was like, knowledge is power. We need to let Buffalo know what's here. And I tell my kids and I tell little kids and I I, I was like, I love the kids. You already know that. <laughs> Look, when my kids are gone, I got other people's kids. Yeah. But the simple fact is, is I yes, tell them, I can't do it. don't just look at Buffalo. Think outside. Yeah. Like I love Mozart. I love Mozart. I love ballet. I love opera. I love it all. Jazz, tap, yeah. rock, hip hop. I love it. Don't just keep your mind bottles here. There's more outside. I've traveled to Aruba, Never stay in the Bahamas, box. Jamaica, Mexico, Hawaii. No. You don't stay in a box. And that's another thing. People keep God in the box. People keep you in a box. No, don't ever be um, just, oh, I'm okay, content. No. If you don't have the drive, then you're going to just be another number. But if you got that passion, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, look at Dr. King. Like that meeting. I wish that I was that fly on the wall when Dr. King and Malcolm met. Mm-hmm. I wish I was in that. And the different world, how they brought different things. And remember a different world when they had, let's see how they would, what was their conversation about? And how the two young men was playing Martin and playing Malcolm. Mm-hmm. 
and just thinking about what happened behind those closed doors, mm. if those doors could talk, mm. we had power in one room on one accord. Mm. Why can't we get back on one accord now? And it's out for themselves. Right. And this Providing sad. confidentiality and, and, and the lack of unity. Uh, something you said, I got to ask you a question. You say you sharpen your kids. Mm-hmm. Play with me here. What is the opposite of sharpening? Think in terms of pencils. Dull, stale, exactly. great. So to the people listening, if you don't have someone like Granny or Nicole, if you feel like no one's sharpening you, it's that caveman. You got to sharpen yourself. Yes. Right. You got to get a stone and just whittle something sharp and find sharp people out there. I can't, you know, I got to give love to uh, Erie County legislator, uh, April Baskin, brilliant, powerful black woman. She's been under my wing now. She's majority leader in Erie County legislature. Mm. You know, Councilman Ulysses Wingo is my brother. He's not everyone's brother, but the surest way to failure is trying to please everybody. Uh, <laughs> bottom line is, these are people who you can look to and say, you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, mm-hmm. you can be a public official. The mayor's black, baby. Right. Mayor Byron Brown's four-time running. But we need him to step up more. As we do. I said it. No, it's, listen, and patriotism is... Let's not see you just on election. Let's see you doing more and doing more, meaning being out there in the field, being out there, getting your hands dirty and not be like, oh, that's not my problem. I got to go call my office. No, let's see you out here. Let's see you on the streets. Let's see you. Like this job opportunity, I'm grateful for it. But why is it starting at 14? Why isn't it starting at 13? Teenagers at 13, let them start learning how to have a bank account. Let them start learning how to keep track of their finances. Let them start learning how, what is a want and what is a need. A want and a need is totally different. A want is, oh, I want that because they got that. No, a need means I need food in my house. I need electric on, I need heat on. Let's teach these kids values. Let's teach them fundamentals. And let it stop being script and, oh, the test scores for the states. Let teachers, I seen something on the news today. Let teachers start, stop worrying about these test scores and let's start worrying about these children and their lives and become friends with these kids so they could want to learn and want to come to school. You know, many kids don't want to come to school because the teachers are either being nasty, rude, don't want to be there, or just, let's just, let's hurry up and get this class period over. Yeah, what happened to teachers. the teachers that love kids? My English teacher, Mrs. Marshall, I love her. She was like, you got greatness in you. Mm-hmm. You love to read. I'm like, everybody else, they didn't want to read Julius Caesar because, you know, in English, 10th grade, you're reading Shakespeare and everything else. I loved it. I was creating them more. She was like, and then we worked outside and did other things. But the simple fact is, where are those teachers as Miss Marshall? Where are those teachers that we had that love doing their job, that love coming to teach these kids? We have people like, oh, I'm Tanya. They can't get rid of me. We got a union. No, if you don't like kids, you should not be a teacher. If you don't like kids, you shouldn't work with kids. If you don't like kids, you should not be in daycare. If you don't like kids, then you you need to remove yourself and stop being CPS worker. Stop being a court case. Stop being somebody you don't like. Do something you love. Do something you have passion for. But what you're not going to do is taint my kids. And any kids that come in my possession is my kids until the court say otherwise. So I protect every child that comes in my home. Mm-hmm. And I refuse. People was like, why do you care so much? Because this child needs to know somebody's out here fighting for them. All right. Because society's not. Society definitely. What happened to the big mamas that we used to have that made sure that family have dinners, community cookouts, and you can't even go to a cookout anymore without somebody coming and shooting. Because big mamas nowadays are uh, under 40 years old. You know, it's funny. So-called conservatives and black nationalists have more in common than you'd think. Mm. If you don't want black people running and controlling the politics and economics of their own community, you want other people running black people's stuff. So conservatives have this thing where we don't want black people lynching, leeching, leeching off us and living mm-hmm. off welfare. 
Mm-hmm. That's funny because black nationalists happen to agree with that exact same thing. We don't want to beg for scraps at your table. We want our own stuff. Yes. Right. So I'm not arguing against integration versus segregation, but just the idea of black people owning and controlling and running their own stuff, a.k.a. schools, mm-hmm. is a very, very big issue. The author Juanza Kunjufu. Author, author of, he's like the beast of all uh, black education literature. He wrote books like Black Teachers, uh, White Teachers, Black Students, and The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, and just brilliant things. He once said, the fate of young black men lies in the hands of white women. You know what he meant by that? Most young black men that you even know, and maybe even my brother to the left here, go their whole K through 12 and never have a black male as a teacher. Mm-hmm. So you're asking where are the teachers that care? I will add to that, where are our black male teachers? Yeah. And how badly we need them. Yes. And if people are listening, and it doesn't matter if you're black, because you can be black and confused, or you know whether you're white and you just didn't, didn't ever consider it again, does it matter? Yeah, it does matter. Right. It does matter to see a black man in the classroom before you are a graduate senior mm-hmm. year. Yeah. I was a founding social studies teacher at Kip Sankofa Charter School in Buffalo's East Side. The Kip Network, Lord Jesus, was the Marines of teaching. Mm-hmm. Fifth graders, 10 year old, went to school from seven to five every day, every other summer and three, uh, every other weekend and three weeks in the summer. 40%. They would shake the hand of the uh, pr- uh, principal every day. And she'd say, college in, they say 2011. College in, 2012. It was a college preparatory middle school. We currently have, in, in, in 2003 when it was founded, I was the founding social studies teacher, teaching in a very unique way. Um, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, uh, there's a lot, there was 12 charter schools when that happened in 2003, and several of them been shut down, including Kip. Sanko, uh. Kip Sankofa, and things of that nature. And the problem is, it was a college preparatory middle school, of which so many, co- I'm, not, I'm not dissing, okay? But there's a lot of charter schools. When I'm driving to work, I'm hearing about all these charter schools uh, that are college preparatory middle schools. I was a frontline soldier, and I can tell you that if you go to a college preparatory middle school, you could very well be sent to one of these Oh, Lord, help me with my language. Lord, hello, Lord, help me. <laughs> one of these crappy. Mm. You're doing oh, good. Crappy. He's doing I'm very really good. Really good. Holding it. One of these crappy high schools that undoes all the good mm-hmm. college prep. That was work applied. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of black folk who take their kids out of the city to take them to the suburbs so they can get, quote unquote, a better education. Mm hmm. And, you know, big shout out to City Honors and Olmstead. There's some jewels in the Buffalo public school system. But this idea of, you know, school vouchers. Well, you, Leroy and Sharkisha, you can get this voucher and you can go out of the school. That's like letting you get off a sinking boat, but you're not going to fix the boat. You get five kids, let them get off the boat. Fix the boat. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, when we moved up here, my husband and I went on the school district mm-hmm. and looked to see what are the top schools. Where they at, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the simple fact is, my kids are not going to no gang war. Mm-hmm. My kids are not going to a school that does not have the proper education I'm looking for to in- install in my children. Right. And number three, I'd rather pay higher taxes, and that's why we live in Amherst. So that way they get a better school system. Their school has a, a swimming pool. In middle school, growing up, I was didn't even have it in high school. Yeah, my kids got it. But the simple too, fact yeah. is, my husband and I rather work. We was thirty when we brought our home. We wouldn't have been able to buy that on Long Island. No, you would not. And the homes are cheaper downtown Buffalo and everything. But the simple fact is, the school system stinks. Wow. They are horrible. I refuse to send them to school. So that way they could be like, oh, you high sedity and everything else because you want to dress proper and talk proper. Oh, you acting white. That's what we get. That's, That's what, they what tell my kids my daughters, get. I hate it. You okay. acting they white. Talk or proper. One woman on the phone where I used to work in a law, f- um, law firm down on Long Island. Yeah. I'm answering the phone, setting up for the depositions and everything. She was like, oh, who are these black people? Mm. Thank God I'm talking to you. Oh. I was like, oh. I said, I'm she sorry. She said that to the wrong person. I, I miss this Negro. <laughs> <laughs> I, miss. I said, I said, I'm that's sorry, a, come again. That's the movie, The Jerk, with Steve Martin. That so was. look, so I didn't say nothing until she showed up for the deposition, and she was like, "Who's Nicole?" 
And all the girls was like, that's Nicole. That's I the said, so mm-hmm. I just sat there. I said, oh, all these black people. Well, I'm black, boo. How you doing? She, be, I, I, I I, I, she couldn't say nothing. Oh, oh, well, I didn't mean. No, you meant exactly what you, you said. Exactly so let me tell you, you something. What? You racist little pig. Oh, I advise you to watch who you speak to or if you don't know who, who's on the other end because you may get somebody that might just lay you out. Mm. But see, I'm better than that because I was raised better. This is a public service announcement from Nicole Dalton. But you it's, might get your ass. <laughs> B.C. before Christ, oh, man. man. Listen, so. my husband had to carry me out of places, okay? So I, you come at me sideways. Look, uh, Mr. Dr. B here saw me in action one time. Yeah. That chick tried to um, yeah. kiss my husband. And I was pregnant with Miles. Oh, my. And everybody else was like, wanna... oh. Yeah. They was like, I got to go. Everybody took yeah, the B-line. Yeah, I don't line. Outcome of that no. So I listen, was... I got I to gotta jump. In with what Nicole said. Now, Nicole, you know I love him. Mm-hmm. You know Shamark is my brother. I know. Gandhi once said, poverty is the worst form of violence. <sighs> and I love my Daltons like their blood family. Yeah. But I serve <sighs> people who can't get out of Certain parts of where they mm-hmm. live, and there, and I, and I, and this is not a polar argument. This is not, I'm not saying, oh no, we have them. I'm saying it clearly. I know you get it, but the mother that's stuck on X Street on mm-hmm. the east side, you know, where it is a gang mm-hmm. war, where the kids either are pregnant or know someone that's pregnant, either smoke that cush mm-hmm. or know someone that does. Either and know somebody who died from gun violence that yeah. year in their community. Or These being kids in the North, South, East, and uh, Sweet, well, Sweet Homes, you know, we all have our Sweet own challenge. Borderline. The bottom right. line is this those parents, just as much as you, they're God's children, too, and their kids deserve a shot mm-hmm. at a bright future, too. They do. And You're right. Big shout out to the, the, the expatriates, the migrants who leave that and, and have that, have, have the economic footing to make that choice. Mm-hmm. Right. But what? How? What is the way out of poverty? What is the way out of that? And again, you know the magic word. Right. Education. 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 Hey, education. Go back to it. Of, you know, it, it, I don't want you to hate on Nicole's story. Yes, yeah, you know what? She is a loud, sedity, light skin, leaving the hood. That you don't know from people who might t- 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 uh, mm-hmm. uh, log in for the first time with you. The idea of seeing a move like that is not to rub it in the face of people still in that exactly. condition. It's to say, you can do it, do it too. too. And right. if enough people do that, you can improve your community where you don't have to leave it. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's the bigger point because if you look at what uh, Mayor Byron Brown is doing well and the re- rebuilding of the Riverside. When I first met you and your husband, where you face first came from Long Island Buffalo, the Downtown didn't that look was, the way it did. No. We used to be ashamed. People would be like, here, can I go downtown? You're like, you are downtown. You sure? Downtown. <laughs> you are sure? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. My husband and I give back to the community. Mm-hmm. We both was raised in a household where we lived in an apartment. Mm-hmm. My mother said she worked two jobs to say, I'm getting you out of this apartment. Mm-hmm. We are going to get out of it. We had lived in Huntington all our life until my stepfather passed away. Mm -hmm. She worked. She worked two jobs. She even worked the night shift because she said, I want more for you. My mother, mother, was an alcoholic. She was a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. My mother was like, I want better for you than what I had. My Mm -hmm. mother busted her butt and became a registered nurse. And so then with her instilling and my grandmother instilling saying, do not settle. Right. So any kids that come in my household or any kids that come around Miss Nicole, right. they would tell you, Miss Nicole is like, nope, you could do better. Let's go. Why are you not listening to your mom? Why? Right. And then if I see a mom hurting and struggling, I used to be a single mom for my first divorce. Right. I'm going to help you. Right. But I can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. Because a lot of people right now, their mentality was like, oh, I'm here. My mother was on welfare. I'll be on welfare. Yeah. But for the ones I see that want help, and that seek help, oh, Nicole got you. Right. What you need? Right. Come on. Okay, I can't fit these clothes. Do you need them? A business interview. Let's go ahead and practice and rehearse. Right. 
and my husband. Okay, babe, go reach out to him. Okay, like we do, um, our church does the men. What is it called for the boys? Boys to men. Boys to men. And then our church does, I, I do the little baby ministry. Because why? Because our children are our future. And I tell them, don't just look at Buffalo. Just don't look at your home issues. We could think, think outside the box. Sometimes you have to go into your own world and make sure it happens. Right. But you got to have that drive. And some people have parents that down talk you saying, oh, you're going to be nothing. You're going to be just yeah. like your daddy. You're just going to be like this. Or you're going to be that. And then, no, boo. Miss Nicole is here. Let's go. Finding that mentor. That's all I, I, need. I I've taught for three decades. I've taught everything I can do real young kids. That's just not my calling. <laughs> I call grade, another from fifth, from fifth grade all the way to uh, community college, college, university. It's not your fault for not knowing. It's your fault for not asking. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, there are people and there are programs that are out there. And I have to let you know on a strict business tip. There's people getting paid a lot of good money to help you. Yep. And they're making their money whether you help them or if you get exactly. help or not. Right. It's like a librarian. Nobody comes to get the book. She's still going to get paid for She doesn't get paid by rental. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? There's people in college. There's there's organizations and, and agencies on college campuses, just throughout the community and everything. But I guess what I really want to make sure the viewers know is one of my famous Dr. B paradigms. If you use it, you have to cite me. And that is I'm on. access, awareness, options, opportunity. I'll say it again. Access, awareness, options, opportunity. What good is an option or an opportunity if you are not made aware of it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And what that's what is, we what, hear for. And what good is it if you're aware of it, but you don't have access to it? So whether it's a frontline church soldier like Nicole and the like, or an, uh, a, a collegiate professional like myself, or an a a academic advisor, or a counselor in high school. Mm -hmm. The people who do it right are the living conduits, the living umbilical cords. Mm -hmm. And let me illustrate this further. There's two types of grants in college. There's your Pell and your TAP. Pell, well, it's for my New York audience only. Big up to England, but here we go. <laughs> um, the Pell is your federal grant. Your TAP is your state grant, okay? And it's based on EFC, Estimated fina Financial Contribution, Estimated uh, Family Contribution. Yeah. Right. And that is to say this, and if you don't get grants, there's loans. But yeah, there's people- Yeah, high who, interest. Right. There's people who <laughs> never even knew what kind of grant they qualified for. Mm. They never realized that. I, I write about that in my dissertation. Well, I'm, I need to talk to you because I need someone to help me write a grant to start this forced care program I want to do. Okay. And so we're going to really have to talk. Okay. Yes, we're going further. So options and opportunities. What good is a Pell Grant if you never even knew it existed and you didn't have access to it? What good is Say Yes if you are not made aware of it? Yep. And more importantly, you don't have access, access. directly. Because yes. right. what you can't... Knowledge you can't is power. something if you don't even, aren't even aware of it. But finding out what it is and then how to get there, those are two separate battles. And real educators are supposed to empower, inform, and inspire Uplift. people to realize, you know what? There are options and opportunities beyond my upbringing, beyond my yeah. social caste, beyond my my family's experience. Yep. I can't give enough love, and I hope you hear it in my voice, to the people who got no one to show them the ropes. The first generation college student. For, make, give me a name right now. Just first name. Anyone make it up. Well, Shamark. Shamark. Pretend there's a young Shamark somewhere. If Shamark goes to college, Shamark's children will be expected to go to college because that's what's been shown. Mm -hmm. Shamark's nieces and nephews will say, well, I, gotta, I can go to college. Why? My uncle Shamark went. Mm -hmm. And for those people who will be that person in your family, understand you change the trajectory of your family tree forever mm -hmm. when you are the first person in your family to go to college now i'm known as the richard Pryor of teaching and i swear a lot but what's my favorite f word finish yeah this society and the state of new york in particular mm -hmm. is littered with yes. the bodies of people with yes. some credits but no yes. degrees no degrees and nobody's ever going to ask you in life nicole do you have credits they're going to say, Nicole, do you have your degree? Yeah. And I had a young lady in one, in one of my offices crying in my chair saying, Dr. B, 
And they lugged me in the interview, but they said I couldn't even apply because I didn't have my degree. Mm. And when you don't have your degree, you fall into a group last hired, first fired. But here's the thing also, for the ones that want a degree mm-hmm. and the ones that are making too much money, mm-hmm. they literally told, oh, you and your husband made too much money. And I wasn't even working. Okay. I was out. There's income guidelines based on your, that, yes. that set your EFC. And so then that set you up with student loans. And then here you go with the interest rate. Here you go with debt. So some people are like, why am I going to school look at that debt. to get that debt that this- I didn't have before I went? And then, oh, right after you graduate, they give you six months. Dang and then cold. here goes the phone calls. Okay, we need the $250 this month. I told them that is too much money. I don't care how much me and my husband make. That's too much money for the simple fact is I'm just now going back into the field that I'm loving. I am now working. And now I have my husband, but the simple fact is we have a household too. So the government don't look at that. They just want this. Okay, do this, do this, do this. So my thing is the United States, how great we are and how great we supposed to be, we're still lacking in a lot of things because overseas, if you kept a certain GPA, you got school free. Right. So how come we don't do it in the United States? Why are we busting our butt? And this is where some mentalities are. Why am I going to bust my butt and end up with debt? Right. My answer to that, now obviously... Well, you know, that's well, where coming from. You know, well, the, you know my, what my, I mean? My answer to that point is... We live in an oogie boogie. Ooh, the socialists are coming to get you. Ocasio Cortez is the devil, and uh, socialized Medicare is communism, and all these things. There's a lot of social programs funded by the government that pay for your well-being. Okay. Your 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 library card is a communist endeavor. Just so you know, your uh, fire police and all that that's socialistic. You know that's socialism. Bottom line is this: the idea of free education scares a lot of people because. And this is where we get very deep. College is a business. Mm-hmm. And colleges must remain in the red, black or they will go in the red. A college that gives away. But that, but that's not, this is the, the business. Right? Yes, that's but the business having, aspect. But having an educated, empowered populace mm-hmm. that can, can compete globally. And we're thinking global now. Yeah. That's the bigger issue. And other industrialized nations do, in fact, give health care yes. to their citizens. Yes. Health care and education. Yep. Uh, okay. Can- Okay, but to the listeners here who we're talking to about (laughs) your opportunities, it is a mind state, and you do make a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. And and what I say to young people, I say this to people, period, and I'll say it to the viewers and listeners. I want you to graduate as fast as possible Mm -hmm. in as little debt as possible. Amen. But don't let... Nicole represents with what she just said a, a viewpoint and a perspective many people hold and I, I just want to provide the uh, the other side of that uh-huh. coin and that is this give me another name someone not in your family please <laughs> give me one another John. name John here we go thank you John when you get a job a better yet a career they are going to invest money in you Mm-hmm. They're going to pay you your salary and they're going to spend, like Geico did, uh, an interesting amount of money to train you mm-hmm. and health insurance and so on. So that's, they're doing a lot to, for you. Mm-hmm. So what you do need to do, John, John with the McDonald's vision, you know what I mean? Or John mm-hmm. with the, I'm going to be on the street because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm making these ends thing. Mm-hmm. Bottom line is you need to be able to say, pick a corporation. Mm-hmm. McDonald's, like you said. Oh, well, bigger one. A bigger corporation. Hmm. Geico. Geico. Well, Geico, actually, if you went back to school, they they help pay for your college. If it was in the business field. If it's business. Yes. And all you got to do is show them the grade that you pass, and they pay that tuition for you. So that's But it has to be business. That's the thing. My thing is That's the thing. My thing is, all right, so. But that's good that they. Let's go with AXA. You know what I mean? I like her AXA example. Mm Mm-hmm. John, 
you need to be able to say to AXA, hire me because I've what? I've invested in myself. Mm -hmm. I've invested in my bachelor's degree and my master's degree, and I have this, that, this. They won't be willing to invest in you until you've shown that you've invested in yourself. Mm. So when we're talking about a, 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 a ghetto mentality, mm -hmm. a hood mentality, short vision versus long vision, yeah. I want to I I make it clear. And I want you to be honest with me. Anthony, you just met me today. You don't know me from Adam. Agreed? Right. But you love me though, a little bit. <laughs> you cool. You cool. Man. So, cool, here we go. Mr. B. Here we go. Here we go. Dr. B, unless you're going to pay my student loans. And you call me Mr. B. So, <laughs> See? Do you know he got student loans. Do, do you know it? Uh, I know. Do you know the, I'm an expert on this field, so I will speak on it. Uh. Anthony, do you know anyone who could walk into a Mercedes-Benz dealership and drop $80,000 cash and walk out with it? No. If you did, they would probably be doing something suspect. Very Either much. a stripper or an NBA athlete or an entertainer. Pretty much. Agreed? That's all it, yeah. Okay. So, real talk. Real you talk. Go into the, you go into the dealership and you put down a deposit and then every month you have to pay a what? Uh, a, a, car note. a car note. Mm -hmm. We're more comfortable doing that, financing a goddamn car, yep. than we are our own education. Yep. And what I want to say to the viewers here is get your mind right, get your get your, <laughs> clear up your lenses. Yes. Your your degree is your vehicle. Yes. And it will take you where you want to go. Actually, your career is your that's empire a, that's a good way that of you're putting building. It. A if you foundation. buy my stuff, cite your source now. People buy my stuff. Uh, and, and, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna say that. Yeah, to let, me, let me write this. I'm gonna say that to the group. And I to the boys, to man group. Because that's what kids be telling. No, that's that's true though. It's that's very true. And the problem is how we look at a, a, a asset versus a, a, a expense. Right? What mm -hmm. you're talking about? You know, the, all these. Here's the thing. You grew up in Long Island, right? Yeah. Did they teach square dancing in high school? Do you? No. They did here in Williamsville. They did, mm -hmm. and you got you will you'll learn square dancing, but you won't learn. They they phased out home ec, home economics. You can't, oh yes, kids can't yeah. we used to do home ec and well, industrial actually, no. arts, which is vocational. Home ec. They got it back, but look, compare Williamsville to yes, other schools. I know. But my point is, they'll teach you how to promenade, promenade, and do si do, rather than teach you self defense. Right. Yes. A woman get raped. You go. What good is dosi doing if you can't get to your to the car safely? So I that's, found a kickboxing place. I'm signing up for. It. Well, that's the <laughs> point. Is this it. idea of empowering yourself mm -hmm. through education? You got to empower yourself. Yes. Fitness, spiritual uh, wellness, all these things. This idea of healing yourself, your family, and your yes. community. Right. This idea of. And that's where you come in, viewers and listeners. Yes. Some of y'all have never even gotten on a plane before, some people. Oh, and my husband, like, he never traveled outside of the United States until he got with me. There you go. Love. You, 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 struck, the, you struck it in. Right? So here's the thing. You struck the lottery there, Schmark. Here's the thing. They say on a plane, put your mask on before helping oh, yeah. others. others. Yes. And that idea, when it comes to you being able to help your family. I had a beautiful, radiant, wonderful Puerto Rican girl. She went to Lafayette and she wanted to help her mom. Her mom lost her job and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. the idea of short money and just being able to help her mom rather than, yep, taking out loans and selling I your soul alone. to the dole. So I selling your soul to the alone. devil so that you can get your degree so you can help your mom better. Mm -hmm. It's perspective. It's, it's money management. It's getting done on time. It's knowing credit hours. And these are things that many of us, and I'm not going to leave the Williamsville School District unscathed either. I've seen counselors in certain schools before I was before I was serving the Buffalo Public School and Charter Schools. I was out in Williamsville and Sweet Home and things and all around here. Mm -hmm. And I there's there's counselors, not all of them. Much love to the good ones, but there's counselors making six figures, mm. funneling our kids into community colleges. Now, I'm not dissing community colleges. Some of my best friends are community colleges. But the bottom line is, uh, the graduation rates nationwide for community colleges are 16 to 18%. Mm -hmm. And everybody I know knows somebody who knows somebody mm -hmm. who went to some community college and mm -hmm. didn't finish. And didn't finish. Mm -hmm. That's you know, why I didn't choose the community college, because I didn't like it. And another thing, I wanted to get back into the game because I've been working ever since I was 12. But when I went back to school full-time, I took six classes each semester. 
Yeah, mm. that's six and, times three is 18 credit hours. That's uh, real. Yes. And I finished <laughs> early and I went and jumped back in the game of working, but I working in a law firm. And my husband was like, you took six classes. Yeah. You didn't tell me that. But I got 4.0 GPA every that's, year. I've been on a right. dean's list. This is semester. an extreme example of focus, organization, and determination. And working with babies right. at the same that, that's, time. That's, it can be done. It can. It I'm can a witness. Done. I'm a living, walking testimony. It can be done well. Only with hard work. You know what? I, I, I often refer to my classes and in individual uh, discussions with students. I never forget there was one black, I think it was BET, it was a Soul Train Award or something where Puffy was getting honored. And the first thing Puffy said when he got to the podium, and it's still, it'll never leave me. I'd like to thank my mother for teaching me to not be afraid of hard work. Mm -hmm. Say what you want about Puffy, he grinds. Don't mm -hmm. say, no, can't, no. Oh, can't he, say he, Puffy is a grinder. Puffy's a businessman. Puffy, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> he, he can't you know stop, won't stop. He you know. is doing... He is like, so, okay, I'm planning this. I'm planning that. And he's that. still I'm, on and the he's Forbes still, top five. Love. Biggie's been dead for a minute, and he's still on the point. Yes. You know I mean? Right. So the thing is this. So many of us are afraid of hard work. Now, since you crapped on LeBron, your greatest of all time is who? The greatest of all time I had. No, you, you, you said LeBron wasn't the greatest. So who no, is? No, he's not. So who is? Just give me the answer. It was Jordan. Okay, the reason Michael Jordan... Critics like her say, and I happen to agree. But, but I happen to agree. He was cut. He was cut numerous times before thing. he. Yes. But the point I'm making you know here the is. Yes, I yes, do. Uh, I yes, know you I do. do. I know you do. Yes, but the point I'm making here <laughs> is. But he why doesn't get back Jordan, to his community. Why is Michael Jordan the greatest on the court? And the answer is because the most talented was also its hardest worker. Mm -hmm. And hard work always beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm -hmm. And I've met brilliant, beautiful black students who, for we can't blame our environment enough. No. That's, there is that degree of self-determination. And at some point in time, oh, my mom's in jail. My dad's on drugs today. I didn't live with my family. Da, da, da. I just had a young girl. She, she, Both parents were drug addicts. Okay? Both parents were drug addicts. The mother used to beat the hell out of her. Father beat the mother and her so bad people heard it from the, uh, across the street. Used to come in. She came to my college today, and she had to come with her great-great-grandfather. Okay? Big shout-out to George, who I know is not watching this. Because this is a white family from Chictawaga. <laughs> it's not all race, y'all. It's class. Mm -hmm. Poverty is the worst form of violence. You have more in common with white trash from Lovejoy, Wichita. from Chictawaga. Mm -hmm. They got the same grind as someone on the east side on Fillmore and mm -hmm. whatnot. If you're in student loan debt, your mom ain't around, your mom's all addicted, your dad's in jail, bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. These things are real. And, and are. nothing changes the fact that you got to get up and you got to grind yourself. Yep. Right. And you can look in Black History Month for examples of excellence. You can look in your community. Mm -hmm. You can, if you work hard, look in your family. And if not, you can make Black you History in your family. You right. could be that right. one. And right. you can be the one. And, and the purpose of me coming on this show is to provide uh, a contextualizing story and, and, and to share some major points with you. But the fact is to let you know personally that there are people out there that care, that care. And there are two types of people in your life. People who say, oh, I hope things get better. And people who actually help things get better. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's people who say, oh, I wish they could do something for those children. And there's people who actually adopt them. They just go and do and it. There's people, you know what I mean? I know. People are <laughs> like, go and do you, it. your kids is almost what? And you doing and what? You did, they think I they're said, crazy, I'm they, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. They ask us, how do you do it? We was nah, like, because I they need the help. They, say, I'm like, nah, they need help. And it's, they're calling. It. And you got to see, it you is. know, people ask me why I am the way I am. And the answer is love and rage. Yeah. Love for my people, love for education, and rage against injustice. Yes. I don't believe the opposite of love is hate. I believe the opposite of love is rage. Yes. Because <laughs> if I love you, that's a strong emotion. Mm -hmm. Hate is not strong. Rage. And I believe rage to be a good thing. I've been able to harness it, much like Malcolm. But the fact is, rage. if you don't like your surroundings, tap into that rage and fight your way out of it. Yes. If you don't like how your mom raised you, 
when you get your education, <laughs> then have a family of your own and be the mother you always wanted yes. to be. But let me tell you how old school right. Dr. B is. I finished the PhD, got married, bought a house, had a kid in that order. I'm an old eight track player, man. I'm old school. <laughs> and you can do it. I'm it is, tape. There's, I ain't eight tracks. That's tapes. Blah, there's blah, ladies blah. who, tapes, you know, I'm not, I'm not dogging my single, mo- my, my young mothers with their grind, but I'll tell you what. You can get a lot farther not pushing a stroller before you need to. Amen on that. And, and, and I'm be honest with you. No, that's, that's real tall. I was an academic advisor of the Division of Athletics at UB. That's where I got my ring. UB, it wasn't a graduation ring. It was from Bobby Early's days. I'm going to tell you something. In the Division of Athletics at UB, you know what you didn't see? Strollers. You shouldn't have didn't. But, mm-hmm. you tell me, but I'm here to tell you. I know, I know for, but I'm here to tell you. I know for a fact that a lot of those girls got abortions. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, we're not getting in that discussion right now, but this idea of finishing your education before making other power yes. moves, that's going to be huge because he or she can wait. This Just right focus here, on your education. This right here is the Incredible Hulk light skin. <laughs> <laughs> For her to do what she did, it can be done and it's, it's, it's inspiring and impressive, but it's, it, you can make it a lot easier on yourself. If you do it in a successive order, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Because 90%, she's a freak. She's a genetic freak. She's a mutant. <laughs> because when most people say they got little ones, studying is an impossibility. They can't study because the kid, man. I, I, I said the Let same me tell you thing. something. I'll tell the viewers because you might not ever hear from me again. When I was oh, finishing we'll my PhD, God willing. When I was finishing my PhD, my only sister developed terminal brain cancer. Yeah. She died. How many months does it take to make a baby? Nine it months. It took nine months to kill my sister. She left a nine-year-old, 11-year-old, and a 15-year-old son, and a husband that's permanently damaged. That man ain't never going to be right. Imagine what if Shamark would be like if he lost you. Okay? My mom had two strokes while her only daughter died slowly in front of him. In front of her. Us. And being that college is a business, the university that I went to said, we don't care in so many ways. You, we don't care about you. We don't care about your sister. You've uh, spun tires enough. Finish or get out. You're not going to get an extension. And guess what I did? I wrote a 450-page dissertation in one summer and defended it to become Dr. Bardwatch. Mm-hmm. I walked through hell in a gasoline jacket to earn. What's that verb? Earn. Uh-huh. That's what You didn't get your degree because you're pretty. You're funny. No. You earned earned. it. Everything is earned. I walked through hell in a gasoline jacket to earn that PhD, but I'm going to tell the, I'll tell the listeners, I hope that story inspired you. But if I had my daughter, I have a baby girl named Anaya, two years old right now. If she was in my arms while I was doing it, I probably wouldn't have been able to finish it. Hmm. You hear what I went through to do it with a dying sister and brain cancer and stroke mom? Mm -hmm. A child, I find to be harder. Right, right, Because when you're trying to pay, when you're trying to read the baby pulls your attention and you can't do it. That's so true. be inspired by her. But like Spud Webb, she's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> Muggsy Bogues. People tell me I'm short as whatnot. Now you could be in the NBA. Shut up. You, you could be in the NBA too. You're looking Spud Webb. Shut up. But <laughs> Spud Webb's why. a freak. One in a million. Mm-hmm. Shamark, once again, you got one in a million here. Thank you. But you know what made me proud? Mm. Mm. When... You know how you go across the stage yes. and everybody's saying, ah, what's up, Bobo? I made it. I did it. I walked, across, I walked across the stage and I was like, nothing but God. And then I hear my children screaming, that's my mom. <laughs> See, the simple fact is I was doing it for them because they're watching. I was doing it not just for me. It was for them to show them no matter how old you are, no matter what, skies is the limit. As long as you keep pressing on like Biggie, skies are limits, all you keep on. But the simple fact is, don't stop. Don't stop. You got that passion. Let build that passion. You got somebody cheering you on. You almost at the finish line. That's Miss Nicole here. I tell the kids, I got you. Right. But you got to want to have yourself, too, because you Nicole do. can't be rooting on for someone who don't want to root for themselves. Right. And that's why God was like, you got to do YTAC. He gave him the name. He gave me the vision, him the name. And I was like, he was like, I got everything in Buffalo for you now. 
Now it's time to move. Mm. I had so much, he wouldn't let me release. Last year was preparation. Mm -hmm. Me and Anthony was prepar um, preparation. God was like, now let's go forth. Tell them, we need to support our own. Tell them, there's small businesses out here trying to make an empire for their children. Mm -hmm. Why are you buying Tommy Hilfiger when you have somebody here doing clothing line? Why are you out here doing this and supporting Timberland and everything else? Are they giving back to your people? Are mm -hmm. they giving back to the community you growing up? Are they trying to help these kids better themselves? Mm -hmm. We see past where we at right now. Right now, this is our foundation we're building. Mm -hmm. But God has us in a bigger studio where we're going to have interns. They're going to watch me and they're going to watch him. Help him show them how to be engineers, how to produce, how to mix, how to download everything. Oh, you like passionate music? Right. You got Mr. Anthony. Right. Or you got a vision for business? Come to Miss Nicole's side. Right. Let's go. Let's do. Let's build these appointments. Let's start communicating. Not no texting like this generation is doing. Right. Have a personal one-on-one -on -one eye contact, right. telephone communications. We're going to teach you how to write a letter, how to balance a checkbook, how to make sure you're speaking to these people properly and like, yo, son, what's good? Hi, how you doing? No, hello. My name is Jeremiah. How you doing today? Right. Are you thirsty? Let me prepare something for you while you wait for your meeting. Let's talk proper. So what if you sound like you're not black or whatever else? No, white, it's white people do not have a monopoly on, on speaking correct. I, I, exactly. I don't think they do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I speak though. too proper and my children speak, speak too proper. Uh, you know no. what? They, 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 back 20 years, there was exactly. the ebonics. There was the ebonics <laughs> discussion. Oh, there's, there's, uh, if uh, you don't speak uh, job uh, interview, and you know, there were so many uh, white teachers yeah. who were like, oh, Oh, I can speak the vernacular and I want to do ebonics. You are crippling those children yep. for the job market. It ain't cool. No. You know, I mean, Dave Chappelle said it well. He said, every black person is bilingual. Mm. Right, right. They yeah. can speak barbershop and they can speak job yeah. interview. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> right, it's so, true. But yeah. that ability, the, the ability of having the sense of knowing when to switch the dialogue. Exactly. Like, I know when to be business and I know when I'm not on the clock. Right. I'm relaxed, cool, calm, collective. And me, we got to set up a dinner date, us That's and the what? kids and stuff. Yeah, yes. we do. Yeah, we do. We do. So I think Nicole talk, talk, touched on you know, the three Ps I like to call the power, passion, and purpose. Mm. And what I want to say in closing, I think we're going to be wrapping up, mm -hmm. right, is <laughs> just the key to college, the key to education is doing what you love. Yes. True. I like to joke that I'm a genius. But if you put me in a math major, I will die. <laughs> you, you're not the only, you know, you're not the only one. I was like, look, I, I was wrote a 450 like, page dissertation, but I can't solve for X. God bless my wife. She's a business major. She handles the money. So, yeah. is, you know what I mean? But the bottom line is, if you love what you do, and I, I want to make this very clear, and I say this to all, and for any educators that want me to come, and I'm talking to the entire listening audience, we're going to give you my contact information. Hit mm -hmm. me up at kkb54 at medi.edu. And I'll say it again at the end of the broadcast. My cell number is 716-220-4634. Again, 716-220-4634. Text me. And if you preface the text with YTAP, that'll, that'll let me know that's how you why you got you heard of me on white time yeah <laughs> now, yes. the point is this i don't but want now you, call at a decent time but text text but don't text me I mean, you text me whenever i when i text you back is <laughs> <you're in December. laughs> point is this and you can call too and if i don't know the answer if you call me from an unknown number that's shady so shame on you so text me but the bottom line is this i don't want you to just know how you're sm how smart you are i want you to know how you're smart i'll say that again i don't want you to know how smart you are I want you to know how you're smart. All Most right. people either have a math English brain or a math science brain or an English brain. Most people like either paragraphs and pages or most people like numbers and equations. Some freaks might like both, <laughs> but most people do you like, are you better at one or the other? English. Okay, okay. Reading. Cool. That's why you're that math, that's why you're in law that, rather than an accountant. Yes. Makes yeah. perfect Ooh. sense. What are you? Hmm? You like numbers and equations more or paragraphs uh, and pages? I paragraphs and pages. Okay. 
That a means you'd bit. be good in the sociology, psychology, criminal justice, sports management, I do all numbers, these things. Man. You said all that. I think more numbers than... All right, you switch gears a Welder. Up. I'm more welder and I, stuff like that. But the bottom so. line is this. <laughs> it's got to be a good fit. Mm-hmm. But and you're right. Whether you got hood pressures where they don't want you to go to school, or you've got other pressures where your parents are, like, pretend Shamark and his wife are maniacal monsters telling the kids, you got to go only go to med school. You have to be in med school. And they're like, Ooh, I don't no. like medicine. No. You know what I mean? But, but you know we saying? have some family members. Um, it's not our household, but I know someone personally. His father was a doctor. The daughter was a doctor. Yeah. But he did not want to be a doctor. His father stopped talking to him. Man, you what? think my parents, my father's from Nairobi, Kenya. My mom's from Delhi, India. You think they were thrilled when I was supposed to be a doctor like everyone else? And chemistry bust that. <laughs> and the fact is, <laughs> um, the fact is, you think they were thrilled when I came home and said I was going to be an African American studies major? You know what I mean? You must have been black sheep for a while. She said black. That must have been a pun. Mm. All right. So the point is, <laughs> you must have been the bad apple. Uh, so, but the, the bad the, the apple. The point is apple. this. You know, it's it. When you cut me, I bleed. Teaching anyone yeah. who's seen me in the classroom, man, I've had such powerful moments in my teaching career. I had a student talk about his mother being a prostitute and his father being a pimp. Mm. Okay. I've had parents, I've had a young lady in a wheelchair. Back when I was teaching at NCCC, we had a small enough classroom, enough time where everyone would introduce themselves. And we had an inquisition. They would introduce themselves to the whole class. This white girl rolled up in a wheelchair. Hello, my name's Tina, and I hate my mom's gut. She's a B. And all the black people were like, oh. And I was like, wow, that's real. Yeah. And it got me to think, just because your family doesn't mean your blood. Yeah. And sometimes our family does more damage to us. Ooh, you ain't so, never lying on that one. So, these moments, I want to let people know that when you're in the right major, and even if you're in a sciencey major, don't let four years of college stop you from getting an education. Mm-hmm. And think about the isms, racism, sexism, homophobia, Islamophobia, all these things. And, and don't be afraid of the social sciences, psychology, how mm-hmm. people think, sociology, how people interact. Because if you go out into society with your receipt, or, uh, diploma, mm-hmm. you will leave as dumb as the day you came in if you don't learn about the society in which we operate. And right. here's another thing. Oh, if you go to school, pick the right... Anthony's brain's oozing out pick, of his ear right now. Pick oh, the man. right subject. <laughs> man, I'm pick just, the I'm right topic. You don't want to spend all this money <laughs> like, and Come have on. a student loan <laughs> on a course on a career you hate. Oof. Do the passion. Do what you love. If you love to be a nurse and take care of people, go to nursing school. Nurse. But don't be afraid of the hard work. But you're exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you're because not going to you get it. Because you want to be happy. You 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 paying this student loan, boo. You lie. For comedian Paul Rodriguez said, if you want to be rich, do what you love. Yep. Because you can be a millionaire, a millionaire. But if you hate your coworkers and you hate your job, life is hell. Yeah. Right. But yep. I personally, and they make it. They try to make it a living hell for everybody else around man. them. And I'm like, not with me. Negativity over there. I personally Positive love my fun. drug is my students. My actual drug is when my students come to see Dr. B. I got into grad school because I believe that masters is the new bachelor's. Decades ago, a That's bachelor's beautiful. degree, a bachelor's degree is. Mm-hmm. But you know, now you like. Man, I gotta get my master's. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yep. I raise my babies, and I call them all my students, Jedi's and babies. You know, my kids. Mm-hmm. I raise them. Oh, to I know. I, I call them my babies too. Yeah, well, Even when they leave my home. This hypersensitive society that's becoming problematic now. Oh my but, goodness, but, that's but, not your baby. But, Vince Lombardi, the greatest football coach. Belichick's a cheater. Vince, Bla- yes, he is. Uh, Vince, I'm with Vince you on Lombardi, that. the greatest yes. coach of all time, which is why the Super Bowl trophy is named after him. I don't know if I will see it renamed for the Belichick trophy. Vince Lombardi Ew, was not no. afraid to bring the word love into the locker room. And I am not afraid to bring love to teaching and love to my Amen. students and love to learning. But love you is cannot, powerful. But you can't love others until you love yourself. Right. So... In closing, hit me up. Tell me what you think. Ask me a question at kkb54 at medai.edu. That's kkb54 at m-e-d-a-i-l-l-e dot e-d-u. And yes, you may text me. It's my corporate phone, so it's not like you're going to bother me and my wife. But 716-220-4634. That is 716-220-4634. And please remember... 
to uh, Google the phrase, does African American studies matter? And please watch my TED talk. Tell me what you think of that. And I invite, uh, when you email me, uh, there's two documentaries I've been in, uh, The Forgotten City. Mm. I've seen it was some award winning uh, from Knuckle City Films. And mm -hmm. It's all about Buffalo. And the premise of the movie is one young black brother shot another black brother instead of the friend of the killer fighting the friend of the victim. These two guys, Corey, Henderson, Corey Green and Addison Henderson, got together and made a film about violence, crime, and poverty in Buffalo. Right. And I was in that. I was, uh, that they caught uh, a snap, they caught a, a moment in time with my kid babies. Mm. my fifth grade students nice so that was a beautiful thing and uh, the other one is about uh it's called the experience and it's about reconnecting and literally we go back to ghana i was taken back as an educational consultant for a, a film he made with that so I'll, I'll be happy to connect you to those things and i got a 20 page bibliography i'll send you my dissertation uh each one teach one if what you learned isn't worth uh sharing it wasn't worth being learned so come on well, there's only one thing in this world i hate and that is a know-it-all. Mm. Exactly. I'm not a know-it-all. I'm a know a sum, And I'll share with you what I know. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for all the knowledge, man, and yes. helping everybody. I told you it was going to be fire. I sat back and soaked it up. <laughs> I told you he's fire. I'll break this mic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the Daltons are here to say and i told you he is fire when i say fire right, i mean right, it right right we Who like said to five operate. greatest professors of all time dylan 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 so nah it's um thanks a lot though hey but man yes. my pleasure man yes I, uh, god bless you god bless you your viewers no and let the record he show. gives me a handshake but meanwhile we Do hug. dr oh, god, b yeah. did not drop an f-bomb today he did Beautiful. good well you here's my f-bomb finish finish yes. finish. 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 finish finish your life thank you and you heard from dr b who'll be back i will be back and we'll be talking more about other i'll be back during kwanzaa <laughs> <laughs> thank you have a great night again right. like and share like and share subscribe to YTAP podcast iTunes Google Play like and share what y'all what y'all talking about what y'all talking about what y'all what y'all talking about what y'all talking what y'all what y'all what y'all talking about what y'all talking about what y'all what, what y'all talking about if you ain't talking the real then we ain't gonna talk to ya what y'all talking about? What y'all what y'all talking about? What y'all talking? What y'all what y'all what y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? What y'all what y'all what y'all talking about? If you ain't talking the real, then we ain't gonna talk to ya. <laughs>